Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are the Lions. It is a beautiful night for baseball in downtown St. Louis, Missouri. And we welcome you to Bush Stadium. It is the finale of this three-game series between the Reds and the Cardinals. And after back-to-back heart-wrenching, gut-wrenching one-run losses, as you're trying to get out of St. Louis with a win before coming home to start a homestand against the Braves tomorrow night. And hi again, everybody, alongside Chris Welsh and Jim Day, Tom Brenneman. Delighted to have you with us on this Wednesday night when you need a win. Who would you rather turn to than Johnny B. Good? He has been the stopper. He has been the hammer. He's been the main man all year. Well, Tom, you either go to Johnny Cueto or wear your lucky tie like you and I did tonight. Johnny Cueto, last seven starts after a Reds loss, he's 6-0. and Earned run average down around two opponent batting average, what it is the rest of the year. I mean, the guy in 17 starts following a red loss this year is 10-3. and So if you say stopper, what comes up is Johnny Cueto. And Brian Price is awfully glad to have Johnny Cueto on the mound against the Cardinals tonight. I don't know if there's a better compliment that I could pay a player is uh, that there's no quit in Johnny. He doesn't ever underappreciate the opportunity to pitch. He doesn't want to come out of games. And he, maybe the biggest thing of all is he understands the importance of a starting pitcher pitching the innings. Johnny Cueto tonight will try to become Major League Baseball's first Thank you. We need My all lucky the help tie too. Yes. Same one. Trying to become the first guy to win 16 games in all the Major League Baseball here tonight. Meanwhile, his man opponent is a guy who's won a lot of games over the last number of years, Chris and Lance Lynn. Well, Lance Lynn is getting a lot of wins out there because in the years past, he was getting a lot of run support from the Cardinals. But this year, he has really tightened it up. He's a two-pitch pitcher. He throws about 80% fastballs, four seamers, two seamers. He does throw a cutter. His last day starts, in the words of his manager, Lance Lynn is throwing the ball as well as anybody around, and he will not be an easy obstacle for this Reds offense tonight. All righty, when we come back, some thoughts about last night. You'll be interested to hear this from Jim Day when we return.
by your local Ford dealer. Ford, go further by Cincinnati USA Regional Tourism Network. Stay close to CincinnatiUSA.com. And by Skyline Chili. Feeling good? It's Skyline time. Hi again, everyone. I'm Jim Day on the field. This is certainly one of the toughest road trips I have ever covered. And J.J. Hoover going through one of the toughest seasons I've ever seen out of a pitcher. The losing streak is now at 10 for J.J. That is the longest in Reds history by a reliever. But he's feeling it, and he gets it. He's on Twitter, and I haven't seen this often from a Major League Baseball player, but he tweeted this out last night. Sorry about tonight, Reds fans. That was a terrible job on my part. I will continue to work hard, but I am sorry I let the team and y'all down. That is getting right to the root of it. On the flip side, Brian Pena, you can always expect this guy to be positive. He tweeted out, we can't change the direction of the wind, but we will adjust our sails to always reach our destination. Don't lose faith, fans. Stay strong. I talked to Brian Pena about trying to stay positive amongst turmoil. It's not easy, don't get me wrong, because, um, you know, we all know, especially, you know, the, the guys that go out there on the baseball field, how frustrated it is and how painful it is. And, and, and you got the opportunity to see us after the game. You know, uh, nobody's smiling, nobody's laughing, you know, everybody's super sad. And, 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 and you know, guys, that, that, that they don't want to eat or nothing because it's very painful because, uh, you know, it, we really, you know, go out there and, and battle and, and we give everything that we got. But things are not going our way, but, you know, hopefully they will turn around. And fans are always wondering the mood of the team after games like that. And I can tell you, it is dead silence on the bus, on the plane, exactly how he described. The guys feel it. This is their life. They live baseball. Coming up, we're going to get to know Christopher Negron. What a pleasant surprise this guy's been. But what's behind the jersey? We'll get to know him next. Closing out a three-game set in St. Louis. Reds and Cardinals coming up on Fox Sports Ohio. I'm Jim Day. My pleasure to welcome in Christopher Negro, one of your, I don't know what I want to call them, newest Reds, but certainly a new face uh, amongst the guys coming up uh, recently. We want to get to know you a little bit. But first, let's start with baseball, though. Do you feel like um, you have done enough to really warrant being a, a member of this club next year, big league club? Um, 
you know, I don't want, I don't want to count my chickens before they hatch or anything like that. You know, I just come out and try and play hard every day. And, you know, if I'm lucky enough to get that opportunity next year, then I'm going to take advantage of it to the fullest, just like I've been trying to do here. Nothing is guaranteed in this sport. Have you uh, pinched yourself yet living that major league dream right now? Uh, I've had a couple times where I had to stand back and, you know, take it all in. But, no, I'm getting a, a bit more comfortable. It's been about a month, I think, I've been up here. But I'm trying to, to, uh, to just get a little bit more comfortable with the new setting and all that. But it's been a lot of fun. Have you always had pop in the bat? I would like to think so. <laughs> you know, I've hit a, I think with double I had 11 home runs and a few more in the fall league. But, you know, with the knee injury, you know, I, the, the power kind of went away for that year last year. But, you know, getting it back and, and trying to swing well has been a big focus on my game this year. We've talked about this on the air several times, but uh, explain to the people that don't know, you've always had this sprint of a home run trot since you've been in pro ball, right? Yeah, since I've been drafted, I, my first home run, it, it barely got over the fence, and I didn't realize it, so I just kept sprinting all the way through. And by the time I realized it was a home run, I just continued to sprint the entire time. And, you know, a lot of people gave me flack for it at first when I was down in rookie ball, but, you know, it's, it's, it's just stuck ever since I've been doing it. Well, people love hustle, even if it's on a home run trot. All right, let's go back to uh, younger days. You were listed as being born in Willingboro, New Jersey. But then you made your way to California. Tell us about it. Yeah, I was born in Willingboro, New Jersey. My dad was uh, in the Air Force. He was stationed at McGuire Air Force Base. And uh, when I was two months old, we moved out of there. I don't know much about New Jersey, I'm sorry to say. But we moved to Japan, Okinawa, Japan. And uh, my dad was stationed out there for about five years. And um, after that, we made, made our way out to California, sta stationed at Travis Air Force Base, Fairfield, California. And I uh, grew up in Vacaville, the next town over from that my whole life. So, so Todd Frazier can't claim you as a Jersey guy. No, I, I've gotten a lot of people ask me uh, when we played in New York if it was good to be back in the area. But I told them I, I don't know much about it. But, you know, I get a lot because it's written on a lot of the scoreboards. Everybody thinks I'm from New Jersey. But I tell everybody California. Was it only baseball for you? Did you play other sports? Oh, I played baseball, basketball, football, did not play soccer, and I actually ran track. I was a hurdler. Very nice. How about your team growing up, baseball team? Uh, my my, my uh, mom's from Dominican, my dad's from Puerto Rico, and they, they grew up in New York. So I actually grew up a New York Yankees fan and, you know, idolizing Derek Jeter and Bernie Williams are my two favorite players. Well, we're not going to hold that against you. You're Cincinnati Red now. We're glad to have you. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it. You're certainly a pleasure to cover. Absolutely. Thank you for everything. That's Christopher Negrome. Stay with us. It is Happy Johnny Baseball Day. The ace goes to the hill for Cincinnati, and man, do they need him. We're back after this on the home of the Reds, Fox Sports, Ohio. To the West, St. Louis, Missouri. Final game of this road trip for the Reds, and they're trying to get out of here with a victory. Let's take a look at Brian Price's starting lineup tonight, presented by Meyer. 
Billy Hamilton, Jay Bruce, and Todd Frazier. Frazier has swung the bat very well in this series, despite that aching back. Ryan Ludwig, the cleanup hitter. Brian Pena behind the plate. Brandon at second base. Santiago, the nod at third. Cozart at short. Johnny Cueto on the mound. And right now, the hottest Cardinal starting pitcher. And yes, that would include even Adam Wainwright is right-hander Lance Lynn. And Lance Lynn's had a pretty good career, really. There's 25 starts under the belt this year, 13-8 and eight record. They have always gotten him a lot of runs in the last few years. This year, not nearly as many, but he's still putting wins on the board. Five games over 500. Tonight is start number 90 in his major league career for this 27-year-old. Lynn, a guy who traditionally has gotten off to great starts in the early part of the season. He's been an all-star. He's pitched so well and then tailed off, really tailed off at the end of the year, especially the last couple of years. There's ball one to Billy Hamilton, and this one is underway. In fact, Lynn fell off the map so quickly that he has lost his job in the starting rotation late in the year in two of the last three seasons and twice he's been left out of their postseason starting rotation one and one to Hamilton but this year appears to be getting better as the season goes on one and one to Billy 270 batter six home runs 43 batted in has 24 doubles seven three base hits and 46 stolen bases Easy as it gets right there, one away. Take a look at St. Louis on defense, presented by your four dealers. They'll go with John Jay in center flank by Holiday and Tavera. Changes at second and behind the plate from last night's lineup. Descalzo, a rare start. And A.J. Pierzynski back behind the plate after starting the series opener. By the fact that Descalzo has not started in either of the first two games, he certainly has been an important part of the first two games. Had that RBI double, which tied the game against the Reds in the seventh inning on Monday night. And Descalzo had a run scoring double in the eighth inning here last night, which also tied the game. Well, how about that? In the middle of the at-bat, the Cardinals decide to change your defensive configuration. And Bruce beats it by going the other way. How about that? So Bruce says, take that. He's aboard with a one-out single. I mean, just before this pitch, the third baseman, who was tucked around just about right there, decided to go over and play second base. Peralta stayed at shortstop and moved a little bit towards the, the second base bag and Jay Bruce like there was a, a hole needed to be filled filled it with a baseball. Now Todd Frazier talked about how well he has swung the bat in this series despite having the weekend off in Denver because he's been bothered with a sore back. He had two hits, was on base three times in the open. Had a hit taken away on a great play in the gap made by John Jay. Had two hits, was on base three times last night. Scored twice and hit a two-run home run. 0-2 oh on Frazier. Well, if you like hitting fastballs, then Lance Lynn is your guy. The problem is he's able to, to cut them, sink them. He's got... A fastball that averages 94, so he can drive it up there to 95, 96 sometimes, too. But he throws a boatload of them. I mean, nowadays, the average major league pitcher throws somewhere around 60 to 65 percent fastballs. Lance Lynn is more like 80 percent. Right handed Tony Singrani. One ball and two strikes on Frazier. And now the count even. Bruce with a one-out single. Great to have you with us on this Wednesday night. Reds will be back home tomorrow night. Why not come on down to bank to Great American Ballpark? Maybe start early along the banks. Join us in downtown Cincinnati, the first of four with the Atlanta Braves coming to town. 
Night games on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Day game on Sunday afternoon. Still two and two on Frazier. Talked about how Friday is a big day in Cincinnati as Reds president and CEO Bob Castellini, along with Major League Baseball Commissioner Bud Selig, along with representatives from Procter & Gamble, will participate in the grand opening ceremony of the PNG Cincinnati MLB Urban Youth Academy over on Seymour Avenue. There's a tapper down at third. That is a fair ball. And Frazier thrown out. Last lunge to the bag. He's clearly not running anywhere near 100% right now. Well, that's going to be a big deal indeed for the Reds Community Fund and their outreach programs. And for the community. No question. Hall of Famers Frank Robinson, Joe Morgan, current players Jay Bruce, Brandon Phillips, Joey Votto, along with city and county officials. And tomorrow night we're going to have our Reds Community Fund telecast that we have each and every year. I'll be tuned in to you and the Cowboy doing the work on that broadcast. Two away in the inning. Bruce at second base for Ryan Ludwig. Ludwig had a good night last night. He popped up his first time up. He had a line drive right at the third baseman his next time up. His last two, a two-run double. And a single into left field. Reds coming into play today at four games under 500. They are still five behind in the wild card despite being the four games under the midwater mark. Got a couple of teams in front of them in that wild card that are just falling apart right now. The Pirates. And they're already trailing tonight in the first inning, one nothing. They have lost seven in a row. The Giants are reeling. They got beat. A controversy-filled evening at Chicago's Wrigley Field last night. They'll play in about an hour from now in game two of that series. Atlanta red hot. After an eight-game losing streak, they've won seven of their last ten. And these Cardinals, for the first time all year long, are 11 games over 500. Start time today rather odd at a little bit after 6 o'clock. It has a totally different feel to the entire ballpark. Feels a lot more like a, a day game than it does a night game. And the crowd, a late arriving one, but looking for another near sellout here at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Did he go the appeal and no, says Clint Fagan. Todd Tishner is the home plate umpire with Fagan at first, Tim Timmons at second base, and Tim Wilkie he is a crew chief working down at third. Two and two on Ludwig. We saw a lot of this last night, a lot of cat and mouse between the batter and pitcher, batter stepping out, pitcher stepping off. Appears both combatants are ready, and then nope. Now Lynn needing a visit to the mound from his catcher, A.J. Pierzynski. Well, Mike Shannon, we rode down the elevator with him last night, Tom, and he had some suggestions from Major League Baseball as to how to correct the time problem when it comes to this. Don't allow him to get out of the box. Don't allow that pitcher to get out the circle. 
the dirt circle that is. And when if you swing and you don't foul a ball off, you just stay in the batter's box. I mean, you think that world peace is hanging in every pitch. Two and two on Ryan Ludwig. And that's strike three called to win the inning. So a hit, Bruce left in scoring position. Johnny Cueto to the mound when we return. In his third year as manager of the Cardinals, he's taken him to a World Series and already a pair of National League Championship Series. And he has him leading the wild card in the National League right now. His lineup presented by Mike. Carpenter, Jay, and Holiday to start it. Big Matt Adams at first. Johnny Peralta, short A.J. Krasinski behind the plate. Oscar Taveras in right. Daniel Descalzo at second. Lance Lynn on the mound. Well, the numbers are just amazing. For Johnny Cueto, Chris, you and I were talking earlier. If you hear anybody out there saying that Clayton Kershaw is a slam dunk Cy Young Award winner, that's somebody who clearly is not looking inside all of the numbers. Comparing Cueto and Kershaw, it's got to be a dead heat. Well, if you live outside of Los Angeles, you have to acknowledge Johnny Cueto's having an exceptional year, maybe every bit as good as Kershaw. He now he's going to draw his line on the pitching rubber as he normally does. That gives him the straight line towards home plate. And he's been a straight line all year long for the Reds, 15 and 6. The team is 17 and 9 in the games in which he has started. Batting average against is 183. That's a good hitting pitcher. Fastball up and away to Matt Carpenter is ball one. Yeah. Tied for first in the league and win, second to Kershaw in ERA, number one in opponent's batting average, second to Kershaw in complete game, second in strikeouts, and number one in innings pitch. Now, you may remember early in the year, Kershaw was on the disabled list. So he's made, what, five fewer starts than Johnny Cueto. And, of course, there is no comparison as to where they call their home ballpark on what would be a more pitcher-friendly park as to certainly being a far more challenging park to pitch in than where Crato is at Great American Ballpark. Well, ditto that for the division, with the exception of Colorado, really. No question about it. One and two to Carpenter. And that is in no way, shape, or form to be construed as any disparaging comment about Clayton Kershaw. He is a great pitcher. And over the last three or four years, you can make an argument among the trio of Kershaw, Wainwright, and Verlander. Felix Hernandez probably in that equation as well mm -hmm. as to who's been the best pitcher You're in right. Major League Baseball. Had Cueto not been hurt last year, 
he would be in that conversation as well, but he only made 11 starts. The year before, you may remember, he won 19 games when Kershaw, again, was the Cy Young Award winner. Payoff pitch. Lined hard into right. Mike Cueto is very upset. He did not get the benefit of the doubt on that call. Throw coming in, but it's too late. Double by Carpenter. Now Carpenter gets a 3-2 cutter right there, and I think you're right about Cueto and his... Uh, but he's talking, this is the one he hits. We did, we, maybe we'll get a shot of the one that he thought was a strike and would have ended that at bat for Carpenter before he hits that double down the right field line. Here's the previous pitch, and Johnny thought this was a strike. Part of the problem with that is, is that, you know, and we've talked about it before, and Cueto will hit the next batter, John Jay, right away. But we talked about it a couple of times. In fact, mostly in the five starts ago, six starts ago, actually exactly one month from today, when Johnny Cueto pitched in New York and Brian Payne was behind the plate, it was really the last quote unquote bad game that Johnny Cueto pitched. He went five innings, walked four, gave up two runs. That's a bad game for Cueto. And I would notice that Brian Payne behind the plate was really all over the place. And most of the time when he set up, he was well off the plate. And since that time, he's been a little bit closer to being El Centro back there. And I'm wondering if he did not get that pitch because Brian was so far outside on it. But anyway, they've got two on and nobody out. Matt Holliday, the batter, 262, 12 home runs, 61 batted in when the series began. We talked about Holliday had not had a hit in one week. He had been given the day off before the Reds arrived. He was 0 for his prior 19. He drew a walk his first time up in game one of the series. And he has hit the ball very, very hard ever since. Had a hit, an RBI, scored the winning run in each of the last two games. He has scored three runs in a series. The Cardinals were... Statistically, anyway, the best hitting team in the history of baseball with runners in scoring position a year ago. This year, they are hitting a very pedestrian, if not less than pedestrian, 247. But in this series, seven hits and 18 at bats, more in line of what they did a year ago. That is a 369 average. One and two on holiday. Uh, Johnny looking for a ground ball double play right here. He has rolled up only nine of them on the year. But Matt Holiday is grounded into 17, so he is a prospect for one if you can just get him to make contact here. Johnny, a check of the runners, and now the one two. And just blew it right by him. Looked like Holiday never saw that pitch. Well, that's, One a, away. that's the second gear that we talk about Johnny Cueto having that is just so hard to find among major league pitchers. And the guys I think that you mentioned in that short list of great pitchers in baseball all have that second gear. You're throwing 91, 91, 91, and all of a sudden 95, a flamethrower brought to you by Cholula Hot Sauce. Matt Adams checks in at 311, 12 home runs and 55 runs batted in. Reds have had a hard time trying to figure out how you get Mount Adams out. Seems like every time the Reds face this guy, he's hitting rockets all over the field. He had three hits in the opener, scored in a run, knocked in a run. He had two hits taken away on great defensive plays on line drives last night. He was on base twice last night. I'm getting the feeling that hitters right now, not only Cardinal hitters, but Reds hitters too, they're having a hard time seeing the ball with that background. It, that batter's eye very bright in the sunshine.
Carpenter led off the inning with a double. Jay hit by a pitch. Cueto then strikes out Matt Holliday, and now ahead of Matt Adams at one ball and two strikes. And Cueto to the plate. Once again, Cueto sort of looking at the umpire saying, where did it miss? Well, you see what's happening is that Johnny Cueto is hitting his target. You look where Brian Payne is putting that glove, and it's right there, but he's sitting outside the batter's box or outside this, the strike zone. So Johnny feels like he's doing his job. And that's where the eyes are telling you where to throw the ball and the umpire not buying into it. Where you see Brian Pena kind of tapping the umpire on the, on the shin guard saying, okay, now don't get too close to me now because I'm going to be jumping around back here a little bit. And he's been doing that. Starting inside, moving outside, jumping back in inside. When you were on the mound, did you not like the catcher doing a lot of not, that? Not really. I'm not so sure that there are a lot, but I'm sure if Johnny Cueto did not want Brian Pena moving around that much, they'd say something to him. I mean, pitchers have gotten to the point where you're, you're going to start pitching to the, well, you're going to start pitching to the shin guards or, to the, or underneath the hands of the hitter, not necessarily to the mitt. You know, those days of giving them a good target, Brian, you know, stopped back when he was 12 years old. So he knows where he, if he's going to throw a sinking fastball, he knows where he wants that pitch without Brian Pena having to get that glove right to the spot. Two balls and two strikes, Cueto against Matt Adams. And now full count. Cueto was ahead in this at bat to Adams, and nothing in two. Once more, Pena walking out, letting everybody know defensively what they'd like to do here. Well, the runners start against Adams, who generally is a guy that does put the bat on the ball. Three and two, and another throw back to second base. It's really hard to call Adams a power hitter. Just because he's a big, strong guy doesn't mean he's a power guy. He only has 12 home runs, and he's been playing every day. That's an over 400 at bat. But he's also a guy that doesn't walk very much. He has only walked a total of 13 times all year. 13 of them. And four of those were intentional walks. We are still waiting on a 3-2 pitch in this at bat. I tell you, I don't know what's going on down there tonight between Lance Lynn and now Johnny Cueto, but this is, I don't know if I've ever seen the pace of the game that has started the way this game has started. Even the organist here at the ballpark and the people that run the scoreboard are trying to do something to wake this crowd up. That ball driven into deep right center field. And Hamilton has to recover. Bruce never found the ball. And a throw in the first, and they double up the runner. How about that, Billy Hamilton? What an unbelievable play by Billy Hamilton. He realized his right fielder did not see the ball. And he came to get it. And then doubles up on the throw all the way to first base. How about that? Wow.
Bruce has already indicated he didn't see it. So Billy Hamilton comes screaming in front of him, diving, coming up on the fly, throws it over to Todd Frazier, and they get John Jay for the third out of the inning. You talk about working out of a jam right there. Boy, that is some play by Billy Hamilton. He is something. Man, is he something. Uh, Johnny allowed the first two to reach in the bottom of the first inning, and the Cardinals come away with nothing. Ryan Pena, Brandon Phillips, Ramon Santiago against right-hander Lance Lynn here in the red second inning of a scoreless game. Fastball from Lynn and there's strike. Lynn allowed a one-out single to Jay Bruce on a line drive into left field but retired Frazier and Ludwig to avoid any damage. And quickly ahead of Pena at 0-2. down the left field line holiday over near the stands and makes a nice catch in foul territory for the first out in the inning yeah, we saw holiday make a long run last night and catch a ball right on the foul line and then drop it all went for an error and they're talking about his bulky knee although he may not be running 100%. He's certainly running well enough to make some pretty decent ground up over there in left field. Now Brandon Phillips back off the disabled list, of course, when this series began. Went 0 for 3 and drew a walk in the opener last night. Brandon had one hit and four at bats. Hit the ball very hard in two of those four at bats. Final sum up last night. He had a line drive right at the shortstop. Foul away, and it's nothing in two on Brandon Phillips. See where that got him. Wow. Right on the arch of the left foot. And he went around and foul tipped into the mid of the catcher anyway for strike three. Second strike out of the ninth for the Cardinal right hand. And a reminder, coming up later on as always, we'll have our Miller time moment brought to you by Miller Light. Santiago makes his first start of this three game series getting the nod over at third base and he's down a strike. Well you include the first two games of this series the Cardinals have obviously won this three game series. And of the last 12 the Reds have played here in St. Louis they have lost 11 of 12 series and we talked about going back much further than that to the 2003 year. In their last 32 trips to St. Louis, they have won three series, they have lost 27 series, and they have tied two. And they will come back here one more time before the season is over. Little dribbler, nice play by Carpenter. Throw is off the mark, and that'll be an infield hit for Santiago. And he just puts the ball in play and it's got a little spin on it. And Carpenter, of course, is a converted second baseman. Just goes to show you that we saw so many plays made by that Colorado third baseman, Nolan Arenado, that you see a play like that. And he was on the money with every one of his throws. You almost take it for granted that that's an easy play. That is an extremely difficult play. If you get a guy on a play like that, it should be 
on a highlight reel somewhere. Rosario Nado is a rookie last season. Walked away with a gold glove award. Zach Kozard lifts a fly ball into shallow left field, and this ought to do it in the red second inning, and it will. They get a two out infield hit from Santiago. No score after an inning and a half. Serious lawyers for serious injuries. A 1 800 Elk Ohio. Well, we know all about the bullpen on this road trip, but look at just the last three days alone and the number of pitches thrown by every member of this bullpen. The only guy who's rested, I mean, really rested, is a role as chaplain. He has not pitched since Sunday when he came on in a non save situation. And did not retire a batter with his club in front by four in game one of the doubleheader in Denver on Sunday. He's unavailable to pitch on Monday. Talked about some achiness in his shoulder. He was unavailable to pitch last night. And really, these last two nights, that has been perhaps the most overlooked part of this entire series. There's strike three call to begin the inning to Johnny Peralta. And we bring it up because in the opening game, Mike Leak had a one run game in the seventh. He gave it up. And the Reds would lose in walk off fashion. But Brian Price would have managed the game quite differently last night with a one run lead going into the eighth. Had Chapman been available because Broxton would have been on the mound in the eighth inning rather than Jumbo Diaz. Diaz allowed the tying run to score, and then the Reds would lose again in the bottom of the ninth inning. J.J. Hoover getting unbelievably his tenth consecutive losing decision. Well, for more and an update on Aroldis Chapman, let's check in with our main man, Jim Day. Aroldis didn't even throw on the side yesterday. They completely shut him down. Before today's game, he went out and threw and looked very good in doing so. All the trainers were on hand watching him, and afterwards, I went up to him and learned this sentence. Tu esta bien hoy. Basically, how are you today? And he said, I'm fine. Uh, basically, According to him, he can throw tonight. But until he warms up and gets on that mound, it is TBA. Is there anything that could have possibly been lost in translation there? Yes, my Spanish is not great. However, I did uh, hold up my arm and make a pitching motion and a thumbs up sign. He gave me the thumbs up sign back. So we did a little sign language as well, if you will. Okay. All right. 
Well, I saw I watched him throw from up here, Tom, and he looked like he was recovered. So from that little good shoulder hear. problem. So I would imagine he's in the mix tonight, and that's a good that's good news anyway. Because if you way you like to see it, if Johnny Cueto can't complete what he starts, go eight and then turn it over to Chapman. Well, that's exactly what happened when Cueto, you may remember, got his victory in his last start against Colorado. Mm -hmm. It was a tie game at the end of eight innings. And the Reds had to bat for Cueto in the top of the ninth. Christopher Negron wound up getting his fourth hit of that game in Denver. A single to center field knocked in the run to go ahead three to two. And all Brian Price did thereafter was hand the ball to a roll to Chapman who nailed it down. Two up, two down, two balls, two strikes. And Tavares just now getting back into the box. Cueto looking into Brian Pena and trying to put this second inning to rest. Full count. You know, I bet you a lot of the folks watching the ballgame tonight, Chris, did not have a chance to hear about what happened at Wrigley Field in Chicago last night. You were talking about during our telecast in the game, they had a torrential downpour. And of course, I, I don't know if it was the same storm, but I understand we had one equally as bad last night in greater Cincinnati, like wake you up in the middle of the night kind of storm for a long time. But it happened so fast and it was so hard in Chicago that they could not get the tarp on the field. Well, it only lasted 15 minutes, and that is what irritated the Giants the most that they looked at the radar the ground screw didn't see any real rain and then all of a sudden it went from a light mist to a torrential sideways down downpour and they got the tarp on crooked and as it turned out it didn't cover the field and it was a quagmire out there and they waited four hours for the field to try to dry of course it was nighttime there was no sun out there was no drying reason and as it turns out they ended up calling the game with the Giants losing after batting five times, four and third inning, the four and a half inning, and the Cubs winning. And today the Giants have logged an official protest about that and uh, citing the fact that you know if there's a malfunctioning piece of equipment like lights, then that comes under the uh, the clause of it being a suspended game rather than an official game of a rainout. And we'll see how Major League Baseball rules on that. And they have just made a judgment on that. They're going to resume that game from where it stopped on Thursday tomorrow. How about that? I think that's a good move. So that is not a win for the Cubs. It's not a loss for the Giants. It's still a 2-0 game with the Cubs coming to bat at the bottom of the fifth inning. But again, that'll be tomorrow. They're scheduled to play in about 10 minutes from now tonight. I've read where that was only the, I think, the ninth protest in the last century on that particular type of a suspension slash official game. The one thing Johnny is not doing tonight, and that's throwing first pitch strikes. He is having a hard time with his command early on. Well, Eight batters in only one time is he throwing a first pitch strike and he has fallen behind Escalzo at 3-0. and yeah, This reminds me of the game we talked about exactly one month ago. July the 20th when he pitched in New York against the Yankees. One of those very odd games for Plato when he walks four. Plato has thrown 18 strikes. He has thrown 16 balls so far here tonight. There is a four pitch walk to the number eight hitter. He's hit a batter. He's now walked the batter. We'll look at the Reds on defense presented by your four duty. Santiago getting a start at third base, shoving Frazier over to first, and Pena hanging the signs. Everybody else the same. Lynn up there, first pitch swinging, drops it foul and out of play 0 and 1. Cardinals had two on with one out in the first inning. A double play 
ended that frame. There were two out and nobody on here in the second. A single by Taveras, followed by a walk to Descalzo. And it's one ball and one strike on Lance Lynn. Lynn is quite simply a terrible hitter. He has 43 at bats this year and he has two base hits. Coming down the line hard is Frazier to get it. Cueto is all the way over there. Taking no chances. Nope. Cardinal Strand two, end of two, no score. Three beat the streak. You pick players to get hits in 57 straight games, you could become a millionaire. Play MLB.com beat the streak today. No score. As we go to the top of the third. Cueto just now making his way to the plate. Has eight hits in 55 at bats. Couple of runs batted in. Number of games around baseball from earlier today. The Milwaukee Brewers got beat, splitting a two-game series in Toronto, nine to five. The final Blue Jays in that one. Other teams involving playoff contending teams. Boy, all of a sudden the Oakland Athletics are having a hard time winning games. Who would have thought that? They have lost eight of their last eleven, falling to the Mets at home today, eight to five. The Miami Marlins are only three behind in the wild card. They got beat by Texas. And Seattle very much in the hunt for that wild card over the American League. Losers at Philadelphia. Keep you up to date on everything else going on around baseball. The Washington Nationals are trying to make it 
nine straight wins. They're scoreless. But now the Nationals have just scored a run. And they lead Arizona one to nothing. That is a matchup where Matt Williams is managing against a team that he not only played for but coached for for a long, long time with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Two and two on Johnny Cueto. And a bouncer by the mound. Peralta is right there. One out. This is one of those hot, humid nights in St. Louis where you'll sweat through a couple of different uniform tops. You can see Johnny Cueto already has got that one ringing wet, which is no big deal except that it gets very heavy out there. And eventually you go in, you change your undershirt or maybe even change your uniform top. Make sure that you're not carrying any more weight than you have to. to Billy Hamilton. Boy, did we laugh at dinner tonight. <laughs> I tell you what, I know he's my dad, but uh, there are some of the most outrageous things that come out of his mouth <laughs> I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> and I have found myself laughing. People look at you like you're crazy. Well, you heard some stories tonight that everybody at the table except you had heard many yeah. times before. Yes. And Hamilton just blown away on fastballs there from Lynn. Well, you can see what Lynn likes to do. Once he gets ahead, he likes to run that ball right up the ladder. And he's got a four-seamer. That little, not sidearm, but a kind of a low three-quarter angle. That ball just doesn't really sink. He cuts underneath it. And that ball just stays right at the letters or above. Looks so good to hit, but rarely do you get on top of it. He's had 25 starts and 16 complete games, or 16 quality starts for Lance Lynn. When the Cardinals lost three-fifths of their rotation to injury virtually in the same week, two-fifths for an extended period of time. As Bruce finds a hole, and he has a base hit for the second straight time in the game. Single to left and now single to right. Adam Wainwright, who's always been, you know, really the gold standard, not only of this Cardinal starting rotation, but among all pitchers in Major League Baseball, he's right there with any and all of them. But the pressure really came down as well on Lance Lynn. And his first number of starts after those injuries, he did not pitch well at all. And many in these parts thought, well, Will this be a repeat performance of what's happened to Lynn in two of the last three years where he started the season so hot and so dominant, only to watch his season just unravel? But it completely went the other way, and he has been on some kind of roll. That ERA under two, spanning his last eight starts and five wins in him. Frazier pops it up to the right side of the infield. Descalzo waits, and that's all for the Reds in the third. They get a Jay Bruce hit, and that's all. No score after two and a half at Bush Stadium.
telecast we talked about earlier. It's coming tomorrow night where we'll highlight the Reds Community Fund, and you can help us. It all starts with a special one-hour edition of Reds Live beginning at 6 o'clock. Viewers and fans will be able to buy an MVP bag containing exclusive Reds merchandise, plus complimentary tickets for a donation of $100 or more. All the proceeds will benefit the new PNG Cincinnati MLB Urban Youth Academy. We are very much looking forward to that special telecast tomorrow night, but we need your help. Jim Day is going to be a very busy man during our Reds Community Fund special presentation tomorrow night. Are you not, Jim Day? Indeed I am. I'm going to be manning the call center. It's going to be like a la telethon. Yes. Where people will be taking calls behind me, and I will be trying to do my best Jerry Lewis, I guess. Trying to get some money for uh, the kids in Cincinnati. Very good stuff. Looking forward to it. We were trying to get Jim Day to sing a few bars of Madonna last night. As we made reference about that Urban Academy being over there off Seymour Avenue, basically about a block and a half from the Cincinnati Garden. And Madonna was a concert that Jim Day saw in that building. But in this uber litigious society in which we live, if anybody sings any bars of a song, you have to pay money for it. That one is swung on and fouled out of play. That would include happy birthday. I was asked when I sang happy birthday, not knowing, of course, that was a situation. A month ago when I sang happy birthday to our little girl, Ella, I was kindly reminded, please don't do that again. And I thought, well, I know my singing's not very good, but I sure love my daughter. They said, no, 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 no. We have to pay for you to sing happy birthday to your daughter. And I thought to myself, how in the world did we ever get to this point? Well, what we ought to do, rather than try to fight it, we'll just be original songwriters, and by the time her birthday comes around next year, we'll have a new song. And the air fly ball to left field. And Carpenter retired. He had doubled his first time up. It's not a bad idea. <laughs> Now time for you to tweet your photo using hashtag Ohio fan photo and a chance to have it shown during an upcoming broadcast that is brought to you by AT&T. Now John Jay hit by a pitch. We brought up earlier that over the weekend with San Diego in town on both Friday night and Saturday night, Twice in each game, John Jay hit by pitches. It's the first time that's happened to a St. Louis Cardinal in over a hundred years. Hit twice or more in consecutive games. It hadn't happened to major leagues in 15 seasons. Going all the way back to Craig Biggio, who was hit by more pitches than any other player in the history of the game. One and two on John Jay. Well, we learned from watching Shinsu Chu last year, who led the league in being hit by pitches, that you don't get hit by crowding the plate. You get hit by not bailing when pitches come in there. You kind of turn into them a little bit. Jay is always among the league leaders, especially now that Chu's in the other league. He's got 15 this year, 16 including tonight, 14 last year, and 15 the year before. Now, would it be a consideration with the base open that he's also hitting coming into this ball game over 470 off of Johnny Cueto with three home runs? They tack on board of that as he smokes one in the left field for a one out hit. You know, it's amazing how when you start hitting, looking at these these matchups with pitchers and hitters even sometimes a small sample size can get you a real good look at a trend 
John Jay just gets his hits against Johnny Cueto more than anybody else. I'm sure everybody around the league wants to find out why. Jay Bruce has had his way big time with Lance Lynn. And he's got two hits tonight. He's been laid on just about everything. Cueto's fired up there. You know, you got me thinking when you said that name, Shin Su Chu, who had such a great year for the Reds last year. He played in 154 games. He had 21 home runs, 54 batted in. Of course, he had 112 walks. His on base percentage was 423. And he got paid a King's ransom to go to Texas. He's not having anywhere near the season he had last year with the wrist. Well, he's injured. He got hit, I think, in the wrist early in the year, and he's never really come back. You know, he's still playing all the time. He just hadn't played healthy. He's right. played in 120 games, and he has over 500 plate appearances, so we know he's a tough guy. That ball will find a gap, and this will get the Cardinals on the board. Or will it? They're going to wave the runner around. Yep, and he missed the cutoff man. They might have had a chance. And Holiday with a run scoring double to make it one nothing St. Louis. Well, I had to say it, didn't I, that Holiday was late on everything. Well, he's not late on that one. He loves to drive the ball around the gaps, and he hits that ball on a line in the right center field. The trail cutoff man right there doesn't have a chance to get John Jay at the plate. And lightning quick, the Cardinal strike. Tyre Carpenter begin the inning. Base hit by Jay, double by Holiday. And now Matt Adams, who lined into a double play to right center field his first time up on a tremendous play made by Billy Hamilton. This one into right. And Jay Bruce makes a catch for the second out of the inning. So it's funny, a lot of people around here, and you brought it up the first night of the series, Chris, talking about Matt Adams. And only 12 home runs this year. I tell you, even watching him the last three days in batting practice, he doesn't even hit the ball out of the ballpark in BP. Now, don't get me wrong, he's still a very good hitter. But I wonder what kind of power hitter he's going to be as his career moves along. Well, uh, I think he, if you want to be a power hitter, you got to stand up at the plate and try to be a power hitter. I mean, you can't concentrate on hitting the ball to left field and expect the ball to jump out the right. And I'm watching him in batting practice, too, and he's hitting the ball to all fields. Yep. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. He had 17 home runs and about 300 at bats last year. And he's got 12 home runs and over 400 this year. So his power numbers are way off. His batting average is way up. But if you get a guy that is 6'3", 260, I think I'd not want him to unload on a few every once in a while. A Peralta swinging for the fences every time he comes up there. And this <laughs> one in the air to right center, and that'll end the inning. But the Cardinals on the boy. An RBI double by Holiday. one nothing St. Louis.
That'll start tomorrow night, running through the entire weekend. Four tickets, forty-eight dollars. You get four five-dollar Cervati vouchers. That's a total of twenty dollars worth on any order at Cervati Pastry Shop and Deli. Three eight one R E D S or visit Reds.com slash four for forty-eight. One to Ryan Ludwig, down, Reds down one nothing. Apparently the Giants are taking out all that frustration last night on the Cubbies. I mean, it is a first inning, and the Giants are on the board two nothing and still batting. But in the end, the Giants come out the winner on that appeal. And for those of you that may have heard about it, they are going to resume. They just handed down a ruling a little while ago that that will not be an official two nothing Cub win from a game last night after all the rain. They're going to resume that game tomorrow. Well, the Cubs have been playing a ton of night games this year. And I have to believe, and we brought it up earlier, the next time the Reds go to Chicago, they will play three consecutive night games. The last time the Reds were in Chicago, they played three straight night games. As that one is high to Ryan Ludwig, he did not go around. And I got to believe that would make the Reds the first franchise all time at Wrigley Field to play six consecutive night games in Chicago. And of course, that whole fight is starting again about the neighborhood homeowners and all the renovations that will take place at Wrigley Field. And a lot of those houses, you know, out on Waveland Avenue and Sheffield Avenue, they're going to have their seats obstructed. I mean, it is going to be ugly. Again. Three and two on Ryan Ludwig. Foul back out of play. Tonight. This is the first batter for Lance Lynn where he's run the count to three balls on a batter. He struck out one in each of the first three innings. He's allowed a hit in each of the first three innings. And his team gave him a one nothing advantage in the just completed third inning on a single by John Jay who scored on a double by Matt Holliday. Pretty good at bat here by Ludwig. Well, that pitch is per inning. That 17.2 is actually up one pitch per inning over what was last year for Lance Lynn. I mean, he's a big guy. He's a horse, no doubt about that. But you'd like to pitch the contact if you're going to be strong in September. High fly ball into right. We'll back up Tavares to the track, but he has room for out number one. And Lynn, one of those guys, like Tucker Barnhart, like Drew Storing who hailed from Brownsburg, Indiana, just on the periphery of Indianapolis. Must be something in the water back there. We played for Brownsburg High School when they won the state championship back-to-back -back years. He was a teammate of Drew Storen, relief pitcher for the Washington Nationals. In fact, you said how what a miserable hitter he has been here in the major leagues this year anyway. In high school, he was one of the best hitters in the state. His junior year, he hit 500 with 14 home runs. His senior year, he also hit 14 home runs. Overall, he had 92 runs batted in in high school. That, of course, in being an All-State pitcher, went down to Ole Miss. That ball in the air, short left center field, and Holiday got a nice jump on it. Two away. Little by little, Lance Lynn has become much more of a ground ball pitcher over the last few years, which is something that we used to see happen all the time. 
when pitchers came up out of the Meyer leagues or were come coming in here trades or free agents with the Cardinals. That was when Dave Duncan was pitching coach and Tony La Russa manager. But tonight we've seen a lot of pop ups and fly balls off the pitches of Lance Lynn. He's just kind of riding that fastball up in the zone. Into right center, and once again, Tavares will run it down. Brandon Phillips retired. That did not last very long. Reds are gone in order, and they trail 1 0. Cancer's fourth annual star studded telecast gets a fundraiser featuring music performances and stars from film, TV, and sports in a momentous and inspiring stand against cancer on September 5th at 8 p.m. Eastern on Fox Sports 2. Stand up to cancer, Fox Sports supports. Johnny Cueto trailing the Cardinals 1-0 after three and a half here at Bush Stadium. A.J. Pierzynski to lead things off, followed by Oscar Taveras and Daniel Descalzo. Cueto not nearly as sharp tonight as we have seen him virtually every start over the course of this year. He's thrown 32 strikes in a game against 23 balls. And only on three Cardinal hitters has he thrown a first pitch strike. One and one to A.J. Pierzynski. That one just off the inside corner. Pierzynski signed to play for the Boston Red Sox this year. And then was released in the middle of July. Yadier Molina went down with the thumb injury, the same surgery which Brandon Phillips underwent. And because it's on his throwing right hand, they're thinking it could take at least a month longer to return than it did for Brandon Phillips. We're talking about late September. So they went out and brought in Przinsky. This guy's really had an amazing career. Came up initially with Minnesota. Where, of course, he was the kind of guy where if he played for your team, you loved him. If you played on another team, you couldn't stand it. And he got that reputation early on with the Twins. He went to San Francisco for one year, and it was just a disaster. They didn't like him, and I don't think he liked them. And then it was on to the White Sox, where he had a marvelous run and won a World Series ring there. One away in the inning.
strikeouts for Johnny Cueto. He's walked a batter, hit a batter, allowed a run on four base hits. Now Taveras. Tavares has been a much heralded prospect in that Cardinal organization for a long time. They've been talking about him. He's a big guy, runs well. We've seen very good defense out of him. He had a home run in his first game when he came up this year back on May the 31st, and then it took him two months to hit another one. Didn't hit that second home run until July the 31st. You just can't realize how difficult it is to make the transition from the minor leagues to the major leagues. There are no Johnny Cueto's pitching down in the in the, in the Pacific Coast League. Two up, two down here in the Cardinal board. Adam Wainwright, the first to join Johnny Cueto with 15 wins, and then Willie Peralta just did so. Cueto trying to become the first 16 game winner. You know, we were talking about if you hear anybody tell you that Adam Wainwright, or rather Clayton Kershaw, is a lot for the Cy Young Award, you might want to ask him to do a little bit of research on it. Because when you start going head to head in every major pitching category, it is astounding how tight that Cy Young Award race is right now. Kershaw, number one in the league at ERA. Cueto, number two. Cueto, number one in wins. Kershaw has one less win in five fewer starts. We'll get into some of these numbers a little bit later on as Cueto enjoys his first one, two, three inning of the night. Ladder third due up. Reds on the short end of a one nothing game. by JTM Food Group. Let's create great dishes together. Buy Toyota for over 30 Toyota offers. Visit buyatoyota.com. Enjoy boneless Thursdays at B-Dubs with specially priced boneless wings all day long. Buffalo Wild Wings, Wings, Beer, Sports. And brought to you by Kingsford Charcoal. Slow down and grill. You pull out the old uh, charcoal, do you there, Mr. Welsh, in this day and age? Boy, it's nice to do it. It would be a good night, wouldn't it? Sure would. I might be leaning a little bit more towards the cooler on a night like this than I would the grill. Well, you'd have a combination of both. Just the perfect balance. Right, I mean, you know, this way, that way. Do you have a nice grill over at your house, do you? 
Not bad. Not bad at all. I wouldn't know. No, you wouldn't. How about your house? I'm gonna have to go to Google Map and find out. How about your that? house? No. I wouldn't know. There's a strike. <laughs> As it's one ball and one strike to Santiago. <laughs> okay, let's move on. <laughs> Jay Bruce is two for two tonight. The rest of the team is one for 13 against Lance Lynn. You know, both you and I should hang our head and shame on that a little bit because you and I hang out a lot together. You're right. It's pretty sad. Well, I just moved in. Well, so did I. Three years ago. <laughs> Eight. Eight years ago. Eight now, oh, three and one is Zaniago. Shame on you. I, you know, I, I'm not so sure I could probably get into that neighborhood anyway. There's probably a very good chance you could. I know you're not going to give me the, the key, the combination of the gate. And there's a strike. No, that's probably not in the cards. Three and two on Ramon Santiago. But you know, there's a lake out back, and I think it might be a little bit better for you. <laughs> Three and two to Santiago. And he draws a walk to beginning inning, and it's the first walk. Only the second time that Lynn has gone to a three-ball count on a batting. Well, right now on FoxSportsOhio.com, Kevin Groheen profiles one of the youngest defenders on the ben Bengals linebacking corps. How have the Buckeyes' national title hopes changed without Braxton Miller? And all of Sam Amico's notes from around the NBA, it's brought to you by 1-800-SAFE-AUTO-DRIVE-SAFE. Spend less. J.T. Barrett will be the young man who will apparently take over for Braxton Miller, highly touted quarterback out of the state of Texas, among the most heavily recruited quarterbacks out of Texas. Two years ago, he injured his knee during the middle of his senior year and redshirted last year, so he'll be the guy that looks like to start it for the Buckeyes when they open their season next weekend against Navy. Of course, they're playing the University of Cincinnati this year up in Columbus. I believe that is the final weekend of September. One ball and one strike. And a bouncer down to third. Carpenter backs up on it. Good hard, clean slide out there by Santiago. And Cozart able to beat the throw. Well, he was able to beat the throw because the third baseman Carpenter wanted to get a good hop and had to back up a little bit to get that. But he delivers a strike to the second baseman and the scouts is a good infielder. And he hangs right in there and he takes the hard slide by Santiago but not in time to get the runner at first base. That's just good clean hard nosed baseball I like that a lot. Now Cueto has eight, eight sacrifices on the year. He grounded out to short his first time up. And it's punted foul for strike one. Cardinals with a one nothing lead. The lone run in this game came into third with one out. A single to left field by John Jay and he would score from first. On a double in the right center field off the bat of Matt Holliday. Reds have more sacrifice bunts than any team in the major leagues. They have 59 of them. Wait, oh, pulling the bat away, one and one. Let him swing away, and this will be an easy double play.
middle of the fifth. One nothing. St. Louis in front. for us and uh, you know it's, 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 it's amazing to see if you know a guy like him go over there every you know every every time that they, they give me they give him the, you know the baseball and goes out there and, and and told his teammate hey you know what I got this you know guys trust me I got this uh, Brian Payne of course talking about his battery mate Johnny Cueto I'm Jim Day it's really universal throughout the clubhouse even after last night's another devastating loss for Cincinnati a lot of the post game interviews included well we've got Johnny on the hill tomorrow so perhaps tomorrow is going to be a better day there's ultimate confidence when number 47 hits the hill for Cincinnati and Chris Welch you were talking about uh, the deception of Johnny Cueto and how Brian Pena had said that it took him a while to get used to the deception of Cueto's delivery in spring training. I actually asked him about that today and asked him how much it's gotten better. And he says it took a while, certainly in spring training, as uh, Chris Welsh was talking about. But there are times in the game where he is so deceptive, I still have a hard time catching the ball. That's how good Johnny Cueto is. Well, that's pretty amazing considering that there's some hitters up there that, like we commented early on in the first at bat, it didn't look like Matt Holliday even saw the ball out of Johnny Cueto. We struck out on a fastball his first time up with a couple of runners on base. And that's just part of it. And it's not only the fact that he he turns like Louis Tiant and he hides the ball, but he's got a very fast arm. He never gives you a look at the baseball itself until it's coming out of his hand. He's come a long way as a pitcher though. I mean when he first broke on the scene he was a fastball change up curveball pitcher. Now he rarely throws a curveball. And he's begun to use that cut fastball more and more. In fact the Rockies were commenting after the game he pitched in Colorado that that, that cutter that he has is the quote unquote according to Walt Weiss the filthiest we've seen all year. Lance Lynn to lead things off here in the Cardinal fifth. St. Louis a one nothing lead. I don't know what happened there. I thought that pitch was called a strike, but Cueto reacted as though it were called a ball or either something's bothering him. I don't think it had anything to do with the, the strike call. That was a very odd reaction by Cueto. Right There's the call. cutter. Four of them tonight for Johnny.
Well, he was running down the line hard on that double play ball to end the inning. And it looks like he's just trying to catch his breath a little bit. You know, you're well, you get about 90 seconds between between innings. You go out there, you throw five, six, or eight, you know, however many warm-up pitches you want to throw at this point in the game. He could probably just throw two or three and be ready. That looks like that's what it's all about. We have not had very many hot, humid nights. And it is kind of humid here in St. Louis, as you would expect, in August. No, in fact, the entire country, uh, once you get pretty much east of the Rocky Mountains, and, of course, many of us have read the stories, this summer is going down as one of the coldest summers in the history of the country through the Midwest and the East Coast. There have been fewer days of 90 plus degrees this year than there has been in quite some time. There's a ground ball down to short and Cozart comes in to throw out Carpenter. It is amazing this summer compared to any summer that I can ever remember, Chris, uh, for as long as I can remember how cool it has been the overwhelming majority of this summer until this week. There have been a day here, a couple days here every now and again, but there have been a lot more summer days this year in the 70s and the 80s than I can ever remember. You're right. But, you know, when you're talking about Cueto and on a, on a night where it's a little muggier and a little warmer tonight, I think a lot of people look at him and every start, it doesn't matter whether it's 45 degrees in April or 95 degrees in August, he wears the long sleeve shirt underneath the jersey. You know, sometimes a long sleeve shirt can help you keep from having your sweat drip down your arm into your hand. That's what pitchers don't want to do. You lose grip on the baseball. It gives you something to wipe your brow with if you need it. I just think he likes the feel of it. I'd imagine he's been through a couple of uniform tops already. How many do you think uh, Rick still brings on a road trip? How many jerseys do you bring for, for each player? I would say at least two, probably three. It's a good question for and so Jim while Day. you're wearing one, they can wash the other one. Yeah. Or just dry it out if nothing else, right? Well, maybe rinse it first, then dry it out. Well, you put it back on. You're well, not back at all. How are you now? Well, it's still kind of in those days. What a play by go. Oh, they said the throw pulled him off the bag and no argument by Frazier. What an effort that was by Zach Kozai nearly throwing out John Jay from short left field close to the line. Boy, he's playing way around towards second base and just kind of fires it in the vicinity. And that's another hit by John Jay off of Johnny Cueto. Well, John Jay's hitting everybody right now. In his last 13 games, he has been on base now 31 times. Here's a guy that got bounced from the from the lineup, the starting lineup in the first part of the year because they went out and they, they signed Peter Borges. So, John Jay, you've been okay the last couple of years, but we think we found somebody that's going to be better than you. He kept plugging away, and here he is back in the lineup and being their main man offensively right now. He has now reached base safely in six consecutive plate appearances, but his on-base percentage is almost 500 the last two weeks. He's been hit seven times. He's walked five times. He has 19 hits. Oh, I'm sorry. That on-base percentage is almost 620. The batting average is almost 500. The on-base percentage is 620. It's incredible. Well, it was a single by Jay in front of a double by Holiday that played it the only run of this game, and that was back in the third inning. Still leading the Pirates that game in the bottom of the sixth inning, two nothing. Giants four, Cubbies nothing in the second. And a number of games around baseball just underway. Those in the normal starting time of Central Time Zone games: Chicago, Minnesota, 
etc. Holiday hit with a pitch. He's looking at the left forearm, left wrist area. It appears the Cardinal training staff will come out and have a look. Well, for a hitter, better on the forearm than on the hand. Close to the wrist. You know, that pitch isn't even really all that far off the plate. I mean, these hitters nowadays, and, and put Holiday in the same category, I mean, guys that are hitting the ball like as hard as he did to right field the first time up, they're not giving up at all. And I'm not saying he's diving into the pitch. He's not, but he's not not getting out of the way of it when it's coming in there. Well, all of a sudden, it's gone from two down and nobody on to two on and two out. And the cleanup hitter, Matt Adams, digging in. Ball one away. Becomes a very important batter in this game right here and right now. Reds have done virtually nothing against Lance Lynn tonight. They have three hits in five innings. Lynn has only walked one batter. Reds have scored enough runs to win the last couple of nights. They got five in the first game of this series. And they got four last night. Now, granted, you don't want to make a living sitting on four night in and night out. But generally, you score four or more with decent pitching, and you're going to win a lot of games. Two and zero oh on Adams, and nowhere near the strike zone again. This at bat by Adams is the first time since the third game of the season that he has not been the Cardinals team leader in batting average. With that base hit a moment ago by John Jay, Jay now has surpassed Adams as the Cardinals leading hitter. And do they green light him on 3 and 0 here? Already leading 1 nothing. He took all the way right down the middle. Hey, you have to assume that he's got the green light on a 3-0 pitch with the kind of power that they hope that he has. Happened last night, Houston against the New York Yankees, where Chris Carter had a 3-0 home run off of David Phelps after he struck out four times. For a fastball at 94 right by Adams there, full count. Boy, and Carter knocked the tar out of that. Ball. He did. That's a big, strong man. This will be the 84th pitch of the night for Cueto. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning. Big pitch. Runners will get started. First and second, two out, three balls, two strikes. They're loaded. Looked like he overthrew that one. Yeah, I think he did overthrow that ball after he threw the ball right by Adams, the pitch before. All right, for those of us in this Reds Weekly, the big part of that show tonight was your sit-down interview with Jeff Pico. I did not have a chance to see it. We were incapable of seeing it from here down the line. So. How was the interview? Well, I'll tell you, you know, I, I t-boated Tom, and when I have you over for a barbecue, um, 
You can sit down and watch it. Kind of, we'll call it a look back. That might be a long look back. <laughs> It was very enlightening. You know, what he has been more impressed than anything else with this pitching staff that he's coached this year. First of all, it's tough to come in here and take over for Brian Price, who has been considered maybe one of the best pitching coaches in all of baseball. But he got to learn the guys, and he's been impressed with their work ethic, I think, more than anything. And a trip like that is just more or less to give Johnny Cueto a little bit of a breather. You're not telling him anything mechanically or trying to zone him in. You're just trying to get him a little breather out there. They are loaded for Johnny Peralta. Cardinals already leading here one to nothing. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning. Peralta has struck out looking and flied out to center field. Went after the high heat at 95. Cueto retired the first two batters in this inning. Struck out the pitcher and he got Matt Carpenter on a little weak roller to the shortstop. But since then, infield hit by Jay. Holiday hit by a pitch. Adams a walk. 1 1 delivery. And again, looked like he overthrew it. 2 and 1. All this two out noise starting on the infield hit to the left side by Jay. Holiday still feeling the pain after getting hit by the pitch. And Adams only saw one strike in his at bat. Two and one to Peralta. Beat him with a fastball to even account. Peralta, you may remember, was suspended for 50 games last year while playing for the Tigers. And with that in mind, it certainly drew a lot of raised eyebrows when the Cardinals went out and signed him as a free agent. Turned out to be a good pickup. Two and two on Johnny Peralta. That one into right center field. Bruce bobbles the ball. Three runs are going to score. Well, Peralta delivers a big one right there on a high fastball. Let's take a look at the entire at bat here. Our Mazda pitch by pitch of the night. Beto's going to go after him pretty much with hard stuff. A hard cutter right there, then a fastball up, and that is going to be the pitch of choice, that 94, 95 mile an hour fastball. But Peralta finally centers one. That was at 94 miles an hour, and he rifles it into the right center field gap. Our Mazda pitch by pitch. A weak roller by Perzinski will end the inning. Major damage done. 4 0 St. Louis at the end of five.
season with MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service celebrating 12 years. You can watch every game and all of baseball on HD. Visit Reds.com for more detail. Two outs, nobody on in the bottom of the fifth, and the Cardinals come up with three runs. They got two hits, a hit batter, and a walk. And Peralta with a three-run double. That's how it scored. And Lance Lynn is posted now to a 4-0 lead. Top of the order for the Reds here in the sixth inning. We talked about the Cardinals coming into this series. And, Chris, I got to tell you, you take away these three games. And when I look at all of the stats, I am still waiting for somebody to tell me how it is the Cardinals came into this series nine games over 500 and how the Reds came into this series two games under 500. The Cardinals have a slightly better batting average. The Reds have scored slightly a few, what, nine run differential. They scored nine more runs in the Cardinals. The Reds have a better team ERA than the Cardinals. The Reds are the number one ranked defense in the league, and the Cardinals are the number two ranked defense in the league. Because that one really got the body of Todd Tishner. Hopefully he's all right. Looks like he is. But when you just look at the three phases of the game, and clearly there are things that happen day in and day out that would answer that question if you watched every game. Hamilton gone on strike. But the Reds have scored more runs. They've allowed fewer unearned runs. And they have scored more runs than the Cardinals. And the Reds have hit you know, more home runs with runners in scoring position. Their well, batting averages, the runners in scoring position are just about the same, these two teams. They've stolen more bases in the Cardinals by light years. Well, you know what it really comes down to, Tom, is not necessarily that the Cardinals are that much better, is that the Reds have been on the wrong side of so many one-run games. So all those numbers where you start adding up runs and the runs given up and your batting averages and your earned run averages and so on, if you lose three to two, it may not show up in those numbers, but it certainly shows up in the loss column. Jay Bruce is our IGS bringing the energy. We'll tell you more about that. He loves hitting off his pitcher, Lance Lynn, and it shows tonight he has two more hits. Nearly a 475 batter against him. He has these two home runs against Lynn. Those numbers are updated now up over 500, 11 of 21. And right at the second baseman in short right field, two are out. The all-time record in the history of baseball for one-run losses in a season belongs to the 1968 Chicago White Sox. They lost 44 one-run games in one year. Last night was the Reds' 31st one-run defeat. And that's more than any other team, unfortunately, in Major League Baseball. That's the kind of streak that would get Jose Rijo to sacrifice a goat. At least bring some snake oil around and sprinkle it in the I clubhouse. Know what he used a to bit. do that, yeah. Two and one on Todd Frazier.
Three and one to count on Frazier, who is 0 for 2 tonight. Reds batting here in the six, down by four to Lance Lynn and the Cardinals. And a 3-1 pitch is a walk. Second one of the game given up by Lynn. You know, the natural inclination to, to talk about, you know, not only the one-run losses, but certainly there is a large disparity in the bullpen ERAs between these two teams. Although it should be noted, when, when you look at the primary guys the teams were counting on to be the integral parts of their bullpen, things have not gone well for Kevin Segrist, their outstanding left-hander from a season ago. Been hurt, sent to the minors. Carlos Martinez, even though they've had to move him into the rotation and then back to the minor leagues, pitched out of the bullpen again here on Monday night. He's not having a good year. Their closer is having a good year, but a rough patch lately. That one popped up to the right side by Ludwig in the inning as well. Cardinals lead 4 0. Posey and the Giants take on the Nationals. Then the Braves square off against the Reds at Great American Ballpark. Coverage begins at 3.30 p.m. Eastern with the Reds game at 7 on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. I'm Jim Day. Johnny Cueto climbs back on the hill. The boys in the booth pose the question on a hot, steamy night. How many jerseys does the player like Johnny Cueto have at his disposal? In fact, he is out there with a brand new jersey right now. And the answer is he has three jerseys. Nice catch right there. Three jerseys is as many dry fit shirts underneath as he wants at his disposal. Wow. I mean, that's being all over. Jim Day right on top of the action. Ask, and ye shall receive. <clears throat> there was a nice play down there on one bounce at the fan of the stands. Because that one is down low. One ball and one strike to Oscar Tavares. Johnny had only made one start against his Cardinal team this year, and that was on opening day.
when he got beat by Adam Wainwright. one nothing. All the way back on March of 31st. He did not face the Cardinals at all in 2013. Of course, Johnny only made 11 starts total that year. He went one and one against him in 2012 when he was a 19 game winner. And in his career, eight up, eight down. Now lately he's been very good. The last two he's had identical lines nearly seven innings. But he's only been given one run of support total. In the last three outings. Including tonight. Three and two now on Oscar Tavares. Reds already have action in their bullpen. Guido is. Closing in on 100 pitches in the game, and he's had a number of stressful innings in this game. It's not only the pitch count as we talked about so frequently, but you look at the first inning. Two on, nobody out. Stress right from the get-go. Second inning, you retire two in a row, but then the Cardinals put two on. Got out of that inning. Third inning, they scored. Back-to-back -back hits. Fourth was his only perfect inning. And then in the fifth, after he retired the first two batters, it was infield hit, hit a batter, walked a batter, allowed a three run double. And he has just walked. Tavares after getting ahead of him in a count. I think it's probably pretty safe to say, and Cueto may confirm this, although he's not going to make any kind of excuses, but he has just not been as sharp tonight as we have seen him virtually every outing this year. And you're, when you're facing Lance Lynn at home, which is where he's been very good and he's on a roll, you've got to be very sharp. We talked about Johnny Cueto at the very open about how good he has been after Red's losses. It seems like every time he takes them out recently, he's trying to snap a losing streak. What is? Tonight is his eighth consecutive start that he's taken the ball. Eight in a row where he is pitching following a Red's loss. Of the 25 Cardinals that have come to the plate tonight, 11 of them have reached base. And another will reach base. Descalzo hooks one down the right field line. And they are going to hold the runner at third. It's incredible. Danny Descalzo has played this entire year with six doubles and batting under 200. He has four plate appearances in this series and has three doubles. Field going to come in the pitcher Lance Lynn the batter. He's fouled out to first and struck out. Tonight is the first time that Johnny Cueto has allowed more than three runs in a game. Since he gave up four and six and a third when the Reds were at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles on May the 26th. The only two bad starts, and that one wasn't a terrible start. It was four runs and six and a third. And even those three of the four runs were unearned run. That's when the Reds were kicking the ball all over the field mm -hmm. that night. They got beat by the Dodgers four to three. His only bad start of the year, he gave up six earned runs in five and a third innings to start prior to that one in L.A. in Washington. That was the last game where he allowed more than three earned runs in a start. May the 20th. And now he's fallen behind the pitcher 3-0. This might be the final batter tonight for Plato. They've got Logan on Grusick ready in their bullpen.
pep talk look like yeah, there yeah, by that's Payne. exactly what it was. At least it looks like that. I mean, Pena doesn't want to see a new pitcher in here. He wants to see Johnny Cueto finish this inning. He's got a chance here. He's got to come right back up the ladder to get three in a row to get Lance Lynn. He's going to have to take sign at least the two of them. And he walks him on four. That ought to be it for Johnny. Here comes Brian Price. He's already given the signal to bring in Logan Andres. A rare, and I mean rare, back to May the 20th. The first time Equato has allowed more than three earned runs in a game. And he will leave with the bases loaded and none out here in the bottom of the sixth. Pretty much the way this road trip has been for the Cincinnati Reds. So we are skyline chilling. Forty-eight ticket offer. You can buy four tickets for only forty-eight dollars and receive four five-dollar Cervanti vouchers. We have the big fireworks show brought to you by KOI Auto Parts. That's on Friday night. Three eight one R E D S. A number to dial for tickets. We'll look forward to seeing you down at the ballpark this weekend. Now the big oh, right hander now. Twenty-nine ahead, years old. Logan Andrusa comes into the ball game. Was recently on the disabled list with some shoulder soreness. That's why he's only got 30 ball games in right now, and very rare. And I'm sure that no one in that Reds bullpen thought that phone would ring on a night when Johnny Cueto gets a starting call as early as the sixth inning. But here he is, and the Reds are going to play the infield in. They cannot afford to allow the Cardinals more. And the batter, arguably the best hitter on this Cardinal team, is Matt Carpenter. One for three tonight. Infield in. And a fastball in there, a strike.
One ball and one strike on Matt Carpenter. Base is loaded and nobody out. Cardinals with a 4 nothing lead. And on Brusick delivers. Line drive center field. Going to be caught by Hamilton. One run is going to score. Throw goes in a third and slamming on the brakes to Scalzo as the ball gets away. But Santiago there. That'll be a sack fly RBI by Carpenter. Plating the runner Taveras and it's a 5 nothing lead. So on Cueto like the last three runs the Cardinals have scored. The three base runners reached on two walks and a hit batsman. Just a bad night. And it happens. It doesn't matter who you are. You're going to have a bad night. We remember the last time we saw Clayton Kershaw. Well, that started before Arizona scored, what, eight runs off him in like two innings? Every now and again, it's going to happen. It is. What you hope to do is limit the damage, especially if you're in the Cy Young Award conversation. And that means leaving those two runners that are on base on base so you don't gas them in and see that earned run average even incrementally go up. That can hurt you in, in some voting. When people just simply look at the stats, so both Adam Wainwright and Willie Peralta will have a chance to get to 16 wins before Johnny Cueto does. Both of them doing so in the last three days. Good fastball there. And on Drusick fans Jay for the second down. That's his center cut. Matt Holliday to batter with runners at first and second. Uh, Drusick's been a workhorse for the Reds. I mean, he gives you about 60 games a year. In fact, over the last five years, including this year, he's only has 31. 272 games he's pitched in. What a nice job Logan Andrusik has done here tonight. Jay Bruce a call him a catch. He walks in with the bases loaded, retires all three bases, allows a sack fly. Good job. The Reds are down 5 0. Stadium. 
Reds history, August the 20th of 01. That's Andy Dennis looks like on the mound. And at the old Synergy Field, that ball off the bat of Ken Griffey Jr. And Jr. slightly around first base. He thought it was a home run. He takes off sprinting. It turns into a home run, but of the inside the park variety to win the game. That was in the bottom of the 11th inning. That was only Ken Griffey Jr.'s second year back in Cincinnati. Lynn is just rolling right along. He's been staked to a five run lead. It was a 0 0 game until the bottom of the third when the Cardinals pushed their first one across. But Reds have not really had a chance to do much of anything. They have not had two runners on base at the same time yet tonight. Things off for the Reds are down five nothing and they have three more cracks at them as we open the seventh inning. Payne you for two, so is Phillips who will follow. Santiago has been on base twice tonight. Santiago has a single and a walk, getting a start at third base. You know, Chris, you have really four teams that are, I mean, there are a number of teams that are tightly bunched. Heck, you could say the Reds being only five games out of the wild card are tightly bunched. But right now, of those that have been playing well for a decent period of time, meaning most of this year, plus 500, a number of games over 500, and even though the Marlins are now a game under, that went back to the mound one away. As you look at the National League wild card, where the Cardinals have the best record, the Giants next. So they would be the, the top two. Then you have Atlanta in a virtual tie with the Giants. Percentage points behind them. They have one more loss. And the Pirates, who, I mean, have just been sinking quickly, having lost seven in a row in danger of making it eight tonight. Are there two of those teams you like more than Maybe two of the others. Well, we haven't seen Atlanta for a long time, yeah. but I mean, can you ever count out the San Francisco Giants? Even on the in this game, the years in which they have won the World Series, you look at their roster and you even see them play, and you think this team is winning by luck. They're getting hits at the right time. They're getting some clutch pitching and so on, but you can't really project them as World Series winners yet. They've won twice in the last, what, five years? Yep. I think it's just a, it's a habit of winning. It's a habit of being able to put streaks together, grinding it out and being on the upside of those one-run games. And the Cardinals are the same way. I kind of like those two teams, obviously, but. And of course, that's not to say that either one of those teams uh, still can't win their division. And the other part of it is, is that you know, I haven't really looked enough at their schedule to see where they, how they end up the last couple of weeks of the season. Well, of course, Major League Baseball has gone in the direction as there's a liner in the left field, a base hit by Brandon with one away. Where you're basically, not exclusively, but almost exclusively, playing inside your division the last month of the year because every division has five teams that is impossible where everybody's playing inside the division but like the Reds I think the only three games they play outside of the National League Central in the month of September are the three games against the Baltimore Orioles if I'm not mistaken that's the first week of September and so every team in the division will have one of those series and the same holds true for all of the divisions around Major League Baseball so, you know, you're looking at teams like, say, if you're trying to decide whether you like the Cardinals and the Pirates better than you like the Giants and the Braves. Well, 
the Giants are going to be playing the Nationals. They've got a couple of series, or rather the Braves are going to be playing the Nationals. They're going to be playing the Marlins, and the Marlins are still in this set. Well, look, look, just take a look, for instance, what the, the Giants are doing at the very end of the year. From September 9th on, they play the Arizona Diamondbacks six times. They play the Dodgers six times, and they play the Padres seven times. So you get the Padres and the Diamondbacks. But they're going to play 13 times in their last 20 games. So that you would think schedule wise if you believe in that stuff would give them somewhat of an advantage over a team that has to grind it out to the very end. Well, I tell you what, they, they, they take a look on your computer there if you don't mind and then let's stack that up because look there are a couple of teams in the National League East that are nothing to write home about either. So the Braves I know they have two more series left as Santiago's out on strike. With the Washington Nationals a team again this year that the Atlanta Braves have owned. Now the Marlins are a decent club, 500 team. But the Mets are, what, nine under? You've got the Phillies 17 under. 16 under. That last base hit a moment ago by Brandon Phillips, and we certainly don't want to not acknowledge it. The 1500th hit of his major league career. So, congratulations, Brandon Phillips. Indeed. That one popped up in the foul ground, and the big fella Adams will go get it. Two in the inning. They hit a man left. Brandon Phillips, career hit number 1500. Reds are down five minutes. Photo. Let's take a look at our fan photo of the game tonight brought to you by at and I assume that's not David, but from David. So thank you. Never know. After the Reds game, Fox Sports Ohio will break it down. We call it Reds Live. It's brought to you by Performance Kings Honda. Cardinals lead 5-0. And the Reds are making a pitching change. An excellent job out of the bullpen tonight. Done by Logan Andrusen. Came in with the bases loaded and nobody out. He retired three batters in a row, one of them scoring on a sacrifice fly. But a job well done. And now the struggling right-hander out of the Reds' bullpen. And Lord knows this guy could use a good game. J.J. Well, he, he could use several in a row to get his confidence back because you can just see him on the mound, especially in last night's ball game, that you could just, you know, you kind of see the cracks and the weaknesses and you, you feel that way when you haven't gotten hitters out and you wonder if you're ever going to get them out again. 
And then you go out there the next night and you throw a couple of pitches and seemingly right down the middle, instead of hitting them in the gap, they pop them up and you realize, you know, I don't have to be perfect. I just have to be aggressive. That one pulled foul and out of play. Well, we just saw lightning for the first time. Always the bearer of wonderful news, our statistician Mitch Smith here in St. Louis, telling us that there is apparently heavy rain close. Three pitches, Hoover fans, Adams to open up the bottom of the seventh inning. You know, one of the things that really weighs on your mind when you're a pitcher at the end of a ball game, and J.J., who had an excellent year last year, has been in the wrong place at the wrong time several times this year. The Reds have suffered 11 walk-off losses, so they've had 11 losses on the road in the last at bat by the home team, and J.J.'s been on the mound for four of them. So he probably feels like he's let the team down when that happens. And, you know, in the clubhouse, they all realize, hey, we're in this together. Not one guy gets the loss. You know, it hangs, it hangs you as a pitcher with an L, but we know that you're giving the effort. And after the game last night, like most players, he's got a Twitter account, and he tweeted out that he an apology to the fans for the job that he did last night. And vowed to work hard and do better. And I like the idea of that, but completely unnecessary. Everybody knows how he feels. And this is what he said. Sorry about tonight, Reds fans. That was a terrible job on my part. I'll continue to work hard, but I'm sorry to let the team down and you all down. I remember one night, Tom, I gave up a home run, I think the 15th inning against the Dodgers. I came in in relief. I got the first two guys out, and Steve Garvey hit one down the line and hit the foul pole, and that was the ball game. And I went into the clubhouse, and I felt horrible. And I apologized to my teammates. I said, sorry, guys. You guys are out here for 15 innings. You're busting your butts. And I go out there in a process of three batters, and the ball game is over. And one of the veterans on the team said, just sit down and shut up. We don't want to hear your apology. We're all in this together. We're a team here. We win as a team, we lose as a team. But sometimes pitchers, they feel like that they bear a lot of the load. I'm sure Johnny Cueto felt that way tonight, trying to take that team on his shoulders. Two out, single up the middle by Pierzynski. It was after J.J. Fan, the first two batters in this inning. With a record of one and ten, and his tenth loss coming in the Reds' 126 game of the year. That is the fewest team number of games any Cincinnati pitcher has ever had, reaching double-digit relief losses. Only one other major league reliever over the last 34 years has lost his tenth game this early in a season. And that was Greg McMichael. The one time, of course, was a closer for the Braves. And in 1997, was pitching for the New York Mets. And got his 10th loss that year in the Mets' 122nd game. It's a lot of decisions overall. I mean, relievers don't normally get involved in that many wins or losses personally. In fact, J.J. Hoover had only 11 decisions total in the first two years he pitched for the Reds, and that totaled about 97 games. He was 5-5 five and five last year and earned an average of 2.8. Just about double this year. And you have years like that. Falling behind Tavares at 3 and 0. 3 and 1. Well, we 
continue to hear the rumble of some thunder off in the distance and certainly lightning hovering just off of Bush Stadium. Rian two on Taveras pulled foul. Well, I see the reflection of the lightning on some of the buildings downtown. I hear the rumble of the thunder, thunder, but I don't see the grounds crew even kind of unless they're hiding somewhere. I don't see them anywhere. I'm told they all convened down the right field line. I think one of the guys is hanging over the side down there. Bobbled by Frazier, the time. J.J. to the bank, and a good inning for J.J. Hoop. We go to the eighth. Reds down 5 nothing. First inning, Cardinals had two on with one out. Adams a drive in the right center, a diving play by Billy Hamilton, who sprung to his feet and threw the runner out at first base. Double play ending that inning. But two innings later, not so fortunate was Johnny Cueto. A single by John Jay. He scored all the way from first on a double to right center by Matt Holliday, who's just exploded again in this series. In the fifth, with two outs, nobody on. Single hit batter and walk. All three scored on a double by Johnny Peralta. Johnny Cueto would leave after the Cardinals loaded the bases in the sixth. They got a sack fly to make it a 5 0 game. And as you can see, we talked about the thunder and the lightning and the alleged rain on the way. They've already covered the field, although it's not yet raining. Saw some of the lightning flashes there a moment ago, but. Well, when it is as imminent as evidently it is, they might as well go ahead and believe it. So last night, different than here in St. Louis, on Chicago, the radar didn't show any rain at all, and all of a sudden, a downpour. Here, it shows a big line of thunderstorms coming. Just what you're looking for on a getaway night. Still having a hard time understanding why we didn't play this game during the day. These two teams generally are extremely cooperative with one another on getaway day. You know, meaning when the Cardinals are in Cincinnati, if they're getting out of town after the game, the Reds will play an afternoon game during the week. But not the case here tonight in St. Louis. Well, beginning tomorrow night, the Reds will be back at home. We certainly hope to be. Good Lord willing. And we'll get you ready at 6.30. And we
We do so 30 minutes before the start of every game of the Reds Live presented by Ray St. Clair Roofing right here on Fox Sports Ohio. The Atlanta Braves won 96 games a season ago. They had lost eight games in a row until they just came back home. Swept one of the best teams in baseball, the Oakland Athletics. They've not lost since the eight-game losing streak. One five straight. They're tied with the Pirates right now in the eighth inning. And you get a look at the pitching matchups, Chris. Uh, David Holmberg's getting the ball tomorrow. And he will go against a very fine right-handed pitcher, Julio Tehran. He's a he's one of the best in the National League as far as quality starts go this year. Matt Latos takes on Mike Miner. Irvin Santana, big, strong, hard-throwing right-hander who beat the Reds earlier this year. He's 13 and 6, takes on Mike Leake. And Alfredo Simon and our friend Aaron Harang will... in the National League. Number one is Johnny Cueto. He's got 23 of the 26 starts that he has made this year as quality starts. And number two, you wouldn't believe this, is Aaron Harang. And number three is Julio Tehran. So the Braves are bringing in some pretty good pitching if they even they are underrated a little bit. Did you see where Last night's starter, John Lackey, gave a gift to Pat Nishik. Now, Nishik was wearing the number that Lackey had always worn. And it's customary that when a player on the team, you know, comes over from another team and the one of the guys already on the team gives a more veteran player his uniform number because he's worn it longer, it's, it's, a, it's a look of respect. And that's what Pat Nishik did for John Lackey. Lackey comes over from the Red Sox. He's 35 years old. Nishik doesn't have anywhere near the service time. And he was wearing, uh, I think, number four. What was he wearing last night? 41? or Yeah, number yeah, 41. 41. Yeah. So John L L Lackey, as is customary, there's, if you're going to give up your number, you get a gift in return. And the gift that John Lackey gave to Pat Nishik, who is a big-time memorabilia and baseball card collector, was a signed baseball. And if you look really close, you'll see that the signature on that baseball is Babe Ruth. So you got to figure that that gesture of appreciation, the estimate, costs anywhere from twenty-five to fifty thousand dollars. Wow! And um, of course, the the largesse of John Lackey was not missed in the Cardinal clubhouse because before the game, Lance Lynn quipped. Do you want number 31, too? <laughs> that's no, that's something stuff. else. I remember years ago when Steve Garvey came over from the Los Angeles Dodgers, and he wanted he was always wore number six. Right. And six on the Padres was Tim Flannery. And uh, back in those days, the custom was to buy a guy a suit. Get me out here. So uh, Garvey went out, and he said, well, what size suit do you wear? And Flannery said, large. He said, what do you mean, a, a large? I mean, suits don't come in, you know, small, medium, and large. They come, you know, more detailed than that. And he says, no, I want a wetsuit. I'm a surfer. <laughs> I think he got a wetsuit. Good for him. That's Tim Flannery all the way for it. Isn't it? No doubt about it. The pride of where is he from in Kentucky? He's not Paducah. Well, close to Boonesville. Okay. Boonville. Um, way down there. What is the name of that? Yeah, town? I mean, he's out there. He was born there. He's raised, he's raised, I think he was raised out in California. But his kinfolk are yes, all from down there, yeah. Yep. They'd always Uncle Max, who runs the Loudon Square Buffet over there in the in the Lexington area. That's where all the U.K. football players eat. Have you ever eaten there? Oh, all the time. You and, have. And what do you eat over there? It, well, it's, it's home cooking. Okay. So, so you, you go to the buffet line? Oh, yeah, you the get the deal. hominy and the grits, everything, right. Right. And all that stuff. And the beautiful thing about Max, and he's been running that place for years, is at the end of the night, when they have food that they can't save for the next day, he gives it all the homeless. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. So what do you think about this rain? You know, I just have a sneaking suspicion, and I hope I'm wrong. 
It just has the look and the smell of hanging around for a while. Doesn't it? I have not looked on the radar, but it does have I haven't looked on the radar you know. either. But there's just sometimes you, you smell it. You look at it and the way it's coming down. It's not pouring, but it just looks steady. And I hope I'm wrong on that. Those folks right there, apparently, after a warm night, you know, they got the umbrella, but they're uh, probably cooling off a little bit. You want to go sit out in the rain for a while. You've been talking about how hot it is tonight. I might consider that if I'd brought my wetsuit with me. Well, maybe John Lackey will trade you one of those for that bow tie you had from Marshall University last night. Actually, I could wear my. We had a lot of people ask about that bow tie, by the way. Well, what was the significance of Marshall? Well, I, I got that from a, a gal, and I can't remember her name. I think her, Beverly, and Beverly, forgive me for not remembering your last name, but she asked me during the Reds Caravan. Right. If I send and that's you in Huntington, West in Huntington, Virginia, West Virginia. And if I send you a Marshall bow tie, will you wear it? And I said, I certainly will. Well, it's nice of you to do that. I want to thank her for, for that. You know, we meet so many nice people on that caravan. You know, by the third or fourth day, the thing is starting to turn into a grind. But, but, but you know what? What always lifts you up are always the people you meet on that caravan. Yeah. I mean, whether you're Huntington or Charleston or the small radio station or Reds affiliate in West Virginia, all over Ohio, we go to St. Mary's, that little place right up there by the lake. Whether you're going to Lima, huge crowds there, Columbus naturally, Athens, Ohio. I mean, and then you go over to Indiana. Never used to go, why am I drawing a blank? Muncie, Indiana, where Ball State is. Indianapolis always a huge turnout. You roll into Kentucky, all over the entire Commonwealth where we go. And then this year, I was fortunate enough to be on the first leg that went back to Nashville, Tennessee for the first time in forever, where we had a great turnout, great night. But, man, when you get out on that caravan, you realize, Chris, that when you and I are coming on the tube, night in and night out, or over on the radio, you realize how many people, they're going about their day-to-day -day lives, their kids are doing what they do during the summertime, or maybe while school's going on, they're working hard every day, they're taking care of their families. Maybe they got a sick mom or a dad who's watching the games. But, man, they really care a lot about what's going on with the Reds baseball. You're right. It amazes me how many people plan their evenings around watching us on TV and how many people come up and make a three- or four-hour ride to a ball game like it's nothing. And they want to see their red legs. In fact, you know, a guy that never misses – and a young man who will be 37 years old, I was telling you about Bill Case right. the other day. I want to wish him a happy birthday in advance because I'm not going to be on the air on Saturday. I'll handle that. And uh, a young man that has two sweet young kids, and he sent me pictures of his family. He's contracted a horrible terminal disease, and he's fighting this. And uh, he's a courageous young man, and our heart goes out to him. But he's 37 on Saturday. I want to wish you, Bill Case, a wonderful birthday. Just have a... Hope it's a great birthday for you, and I hope the Reds are able to deliver a big win for you on Saturday. That'd be nice. And, and Bill, we will be making sure as we get closer, we'll wish you another happy birthday. But I'm glad Chris got to do it tonight because you were talking about Bill and his family yeah. here in the booth last night. Now, don't you think that couple right there has to be a very happy couple? Absolutely. You think about all the people that maybe get a little tired of being around each other every now and again, and it happens to everybody. But look at that couple right there. Now, if that's not America and what it's all about, mm -hmm. you got your favorite gal, you got nowhere to go. Don't have to be anywhere. You're not in a hurry. You brought the umbrella. You came ready. You're sitting next to the favorite person you have in the world. And you're just talking. And there's no cell phone. And nobody's texting. And nobody's tweeting. And nobody's emailing. They're just sitting there happy. Well, you are sounding like an old fogey. 
No, I'm not. I mean, that's a beautiful shot right and there. that's what I'm talking but about. But, I mean, you're making a general that's comment now about beautiful. all those things are wrong. No. I said, but that's where people in this day and age but are not taking the time to do that. They are, and I give them credit for it. I just texted her, and, and she picked the phone up to check it. I see. Look at that. They know you're talking about it. Well, you ever, let me ask you a question. Do you ever use your phone to text or anything during the ball game? Have I ever used it during yeah. a ball game? Yeah. yeah. Well, what does that say about our relationship? Believe me, if we went down that road, the FCC would be knocking on the door at Fox Sports <laughs> Ohio. You crack me up. I mean, the FCC has very stringent rules. You can't <laughs> sing happy birthday. And it wouldn't be a good idea to talk about that. Hey, what do you think would happen if someone went down and turned that fan on? <laughs> it probably wouldn't be a good idea, do you think? <laughs> now, when you're sitting down there, and we've talked about this before, you talk about guys playing cards or whatever it might be, because a lot of managers don't allow cell phones and that kind of thing in a clubhouse. You're right. You can't just sit in there and text your family or your buddies, whatever it is. You can't sit in there and talk on the phone where somebody's sitting next to you trying to maybe focus in on the game that night. You can't be on the phone talking to your wife or your mom back at home. So back when you were playing, there weren't video games in all these clubhouses like there are now. What did you like to do during a rain delay? I would like Start to drinking? I, I would like to sit. I'm, I did wait until I was a broadcaster to do that. I would like to sit in the dugout as long as possible. Because what I found is that once you got into the clubhouse, the air conditioning is on. It's a different feel in the environment. And it, it was, especially as a relief pitcher, if I was in the bullpen and had not been in a game yet, I didn't want to go into the clubhouse too soon. Because it would kind of make you stiff. You know, you go out indoors, you know, from outdoors and the indoors, and now you're sitting. And you're talking. Either you may be playing cards or you read the magazine or a book or something like that. There really wasn't even much on TV back then. But I tried to stay in the, in the dugout just because you wanted to stay as much as you could. And I wouldn't stay out in, in, the, in the rain. Well, not in the bullpen because there were no snacks out there. Right. And we're all hitting a snack bar. Remember the old days, though, a lot of teams would have guys come running out here and start doing slides on the tarp? Yeah. The, yeah. I think those days are probably over, don't you think? Guys could get hurt. I want to say that they just did that the other uh, a week or so ago somewhere. I can't remember really? where I read they did that. Yeah. Hmm. I did that with uh, along with Dave Rigetti one night in Columbus when we were both playing for the Columbus Clippers. No kidding. Triple A with the Yankees. And George Sisler was the general manager. And we were all over, and there was a big crowd that night, and, you know, we were slipping the slide. And it was about the time that Rick Dempsey, you yep. know, did his famous Babe Ruth in Baltimore. So we thought it would be fun to go out and do that, which we did, and got all soaking and went back inside after a while, and the fans were all happy about that. And we each got fined 50 bucks. It was un Yankee like. You were fined $50. Yeah, it was un Yankee like to go out and do something like that. Wow. 50 bucks. Of course, I was really un Yankee like because I got traded. <laughs> Forgetting went on to throw a no hitter for them. Fine $50. <laughs> Which was a lot of money back in those days for a minor leaguer. Right, and I'm being told that our conversation is tired. But, you know, that's okay. I understand Jeff Picoro and Brian Giesenslaw referring to us as tired. Well, they got to call it the way they hear it. And you know what? They're the ones that are going to have to fill it starting right now. From tired to good luck. Phil, baby, Phil.
That pass to spy, thankfully, and we're about ready to get back to playing baseball. Cardinals have a 5-0 lead here at Bush Stadium in St. Louis at the end of seven innings. And we'll bring you up to speed on how we got to where we are in this 5-0 Cardinal lead. They had a chance in the first inning with two on and one out, but a diving play by Billy Hamilton. The front end of a double play to end the first inning against Johnny Cueto, but Johnny not quite as fortunate in the third. A one-out single by John Jay, and he would score all the way from first on a double to the right center field gap by the all of a sudden white-hot Matt Holliday. Three on with two outs in the fifth inning of a one-nothing game, and Johnny Peralta cleared him with a double in the right center field, making it four-nothing. Johnny Cueto would have troubles in the sixth. He was eventually taken out of the game with the bases loaded and none out. Cardinals got a sack fly to tack on another run. The most runs Cueto has allowed in a game since May the 20th. He gives up five earned runs in five plus innings. The rains came and now they've stopped. And the night is over for a Cardinal starter. And boy, was he as advertised the way he's been pitching of late. And that's Lance Lynn. After the rain delay, they'll take him out. Seven shutout innings, allowing only four base hits. He walked two while fanning five. And now he'll give way to left-hander Randy Choate. And we saw Randy Choate last night. He came in to pitch an inning and a third. And in the four outs that he got last night, three were just easy ground balls right through the shortstop. Pinch hitter is Chris Heisey. So Chris Heisey to lead things off, batting for J.J. Huber, who worked a scoreless inning, allowed a hit with a couple of strikeouts. Reds down 5 nothing, with a couple of more cracks at him here in the eighth and the ninth. And quickly 0-2 on Heisey, a 58-minute rain delay. Ball in a short right. And that ball carried a little further, and Tavares even fooled by it briefly, but able to backpedal to get it. And that's out number one. Rocket right by the drawn in third baseman Matt Carpenter, and that'll be a base hit for Billy Hamilton, his first in four at bats tonight. Well, Billy's got a little bit of pop. He's got good bat speed, obviously, and he just turns on this fastball by Cho. Cho's fastball is in about 84, 85 miles an hour. And he nearly undresses the Cardinal third baseman Carpenter as that ball goes by him. Could never be really a good feeling. I mean, playing that close. I don't care who you have hitting up there. If he can pull the ball and hit it that hard, you don't have much reaction time. So Jay Bruce, a batter, he's two for three. He had a pair of hits uh, against Lance Lynn, a guy he's had in incredible success against up over a 500 plus batting average in his career. Lynn got him out his last time up in the sixth.
Breaking ball misses. Bruce is gone on strikes for the second out of the inning. You know, Choate is one of those pitchers that when he gets a strikeout, he gets the hitter way out ahead rather than blowing the ball by him. Talk about a guy that has figured out how to adjust and stay around the major leagues for a long time. And that'll be it for him. Well, Mike Matheny managing this one. With a 5 0 lead and only four outs to go, as though it's a one run ball game. Yeah, I think he learned that from Tony LaRusa. Tony always made sure that he tried to nip a rally before it started. Of course, Mike McPhee never served on the staff of LaRusa, but they talked a great deal. As Carlos Martinez will trot in from the bullpen and they'll come on to face Todd Frazier. 5 nothing. Cardinals in front. We're back after this. Tomorrow at the Holy Grail, it's your chance to answer Reds trivia, win great prizes, and maybe be a part of our Reds Live postgame show. That's Friday at 6 o'clock at the Holy Grail along the banks. 5 0 Cardinals. Two outs in the Reds' eighth inning. Runner at first. The strike one to Todd Frazier. John Jane moves from center to right. Peter Borges will now take over in center. And on the mound is right hander Carlos Martinez. Dynamic part of the Cardinal bullpen a year ago. Martinez started in their bullpen this year as that one gets away from Pierzynski and advancing on to second base will be Hamilton. But when they add all the injuries in their starting rotation, Martinez, who wants to be a full time starter, that's his goal. He went into the rotation and really did not throw the ball well at all. They sent him down to the minor leagues to work on a secondary pitch. He was in that rotation. He was piling up very high pitch counts, walking a lot of batters. Tough guy to hit. Well, you got to ask yourself if you're the Cardinals, where is he suited best in 2014? And I think they're seeing that again out of the bullpen.
It's all delivered by Billy Hamilton out at center. He is just this, this spectacular. And you wonder, is this young man going to win a gold glove this year? And based on what we've seen, he's earned it. I mean, name me a better center fielder. Of course, there are a few out there that are having pretty good years, but we like Billy. There is no doubt about that. And again, we brought it up the other night. You're talking about a young man who's only a year and, what, three quarters removed from being a shortstop. It was last year when the Reds made the decision to have Hamilton leave short and go into center where he played the entire year at Louisville. Yeah, but wouldn't you think, though, that moving from short to center field is a piece of cake for a guy like Billy Hamilton? I mean, he takes good, good routes to balls. Mm -hmm. But even if he took a bad route, he's still getting there. But that's what's been amazing, in my opinion, maybe more than anything else, is the fact that he just hasn't taken many bad routes to balls. No, and, and he plays shallow. He doesn't allow those balls that get jam shots and on the end of the bat to fall in there. Those are the, the hits that pitchers really want caught the most. I mean, it's one thing if you hang a slider and the guy hits it off the center field wall, you, you deserve to give up a double. But if you make a good pitch, the guy gets sawed off and he gets a base hit from it, those are the kind that, that irk the pitcher a little bit. And he plays shallow enough to take a lot of those away. Carlos Contreras takes over on the mound for the Reds. We have not seen him since the back end of the bullpen meltdown in Denver on Sunday in that doubleheader. But overall, Contreras has thrown the ball well for the Reds. We talk about it all the time, how relievers are unable to pile up innings in bunches and so if you have a bad game or two it can take you a long time to try and get that ERA back to a respectable number again and he's come in and walked in to Descalzo. Boy Descalzo must look like Troy Tulowitzki to the Reds in this series. He had a double off the bench to drive in a run the first night, double to drive in a run off the bench the second night. He has been on base three times in his only start here tonight. Giants are pounding the Cubs. That's 8-2 in the eighth inning. The Pirates finally ended their losing streak at seven in a row. They beat Atlanta 3-2. So the Braves are going to beat the Reds into Cincinnati tonight. Not by much, but they will. There's a line drive, and that one going to get by. Hamilton trying to make the sliding catch. On his way to third is Descalzo. They'll wave him around. Here comes the throw to the plate, and it's a short hop throw to make it 6 to nothing. When Cozart cuts that thing loose and makes a good throw, they get Descalzo. Yeah, no sooner did we get finished about talking about how Billy Hamilton tries to come in and make these catches that he really does a, a big effort right here. He just comes up a little bit short. He was lucky to get his glove on that ball and that ball not going all the way to the wall. It's a double and then an error on the relay by Zach Cozart as it allowed the runner to go from second to third. And we talked a lot about Carlos Contreras. I mean, he came up Middle of June, hasn't pitched all that much, but he has given up in the last three or four games. I make it four of the last five games he's pitched in. He's given up runs, and in three of those, he's given up at least two in each of those outings. The big number was the last time he pitched in Colorado where he got nailed for four earned runs, five overall in an inning and a third. Runner third and nobody out.
Greg Garcia he is gone on strikes. And the way to understand it, he is the uh, cousin of our Fox Box operator tonight. Fox Box right down there in the corner. Jerry Garcia. Well, it's not a good ending to that at bat for the Garcia family. One away in the inning. Reds right back at it tomorrow night. We'll be here on Fox Sports Ohio with the Reds live beginning at 6.30. But tickets are available the entire weekend. And actually, we have an hour special tomorrow because it's our Reds Community Fund telecast tomorrow night. So Reds Live gets underway at 6 o'clock. And our game coverage... Begins at 7. Tickets are available the entire weekend with the Atlanta Braves in town. 1-1 one, one to John Jay with the infield in. is swung on and missed. And that'll make it 7-0 on another base hit by John Jay. Man, is this guy hot. Holy Moses. Is he hot. One base percentage of over 625 in the last two weeks. And hitting over 500. That is raking. Shane Robinson going to bat for Matt Holliday. And that pitch in the dirt and easily advancing is John Jay on a wild pitch. Yeah, you know, except for that one outing that Carlos Contreras had in Colorado. The first time he came into a ball game, he came in and pitched two shutout innings. But other than that, he's been a little bit more erratic. Sometimes this league has a, a way of catching up to you a little bit. And it's his first go around at the big league level. In the air, Billy Hamilton coming in to get it in short right center for the second out of the inning. And Matt Adams will bat with two away and a runner at second base here in the eighth. Reds at the All-Star break were seven games over 500. They had ripped off 10 wins in 12 games. They were a game and a half out of first place. And if they're unable to come back tonight, they will have just 10 wins in their 32 games since the All-Star break. You know, a lot of times when you're getting near the end of August and when you're going through the kind of stretch the Reds have been going through for quite some time now, you know, frequently you start thinking about, all right, who are you going to call up in September and what players might you get a look at in September, some guys you're, you know, counting on. But with all the injuries the Reds have gone through this year, along with their AAA team being a bit thin, you wonder really how many guys are going to get a chance to play in September. I don't think there's going to be any. I think I continue to run this regular group out there. There might be a few more current bench players that get some playing time. Well, I'm sure if there were any knocking on the door, we'd have seen them by now. Right. Contreras walks another guy.
Boy, this has been a rough trip. You know, with optimism so high. You're looking ahead at the schedule and you're thinking, well, you got to make some hay in there in Colorado and you lose those heartbreaking games. Every one of them, a, either a walk off or a very late one, and now they're going to call for either Paul Assard or. Will be the Reds head athletic oh, What's trainer. going on here? Contreras is hurting. Brian Price, you've got to be asking yourself, what more can possibly happen? His all-star closer walks four in a row in a game in which they seemingly got wrapped up in Colorado. They lose three games in a row there against the Rockies, who have statistically the worst record in the National League. They come in here thinking, all right. You got three against the Cardinals. You hang right in there. They end up losing heartbreaking games there. Then they get shut down big time here tonight with your ace on the mound. And it looks like the 23 year old right hander Carlos Contreras has got something going on there that's going to take him out of the game. And then you got to hop a plane. And with no off day, get in about 2 a.m. If that, and play the Atlanta Braves, who are right in the middle of the pennant race and the wild card race, and they're scratching and clawing. And until until tonight, we're playing pretty good baseball. Even tonight, they lost three to two. That's yeah. still pretty good baseball. Sam LeCure going to come on from the Reds bullpen and take over for Contreras in the final, try to get the final out here in the part of the late inning. They've scored a couple of runs and lead 7 0. We're back in a moment. The pride of Jefferson City, Missouri. Saw Sam in the game here last night. Third of an inning, allowed a couple of hits, and those were hits which allowed runs to score. Charge to Alfredo Simon, none charge to Sam. Colton Wong will bat for the first time. Ball one low. You know, I don't know if they're popular anymore or even if they. The Reds give them out, but I mean, back in the old days, you used to have appearance clauses in your contract if you're a reliever. You love this kind of an appearance. They come in, throw two pitches, and that's all she wrote. Cha-ching. I don't think there are those anymore. 
Those are the good old days. Stuff you guys are liking about. Only $48 and received four or $5 Cervati vouchers. On Sunday, the first 8,000 kids 14 and younger received a rosy red book presented by PNC Bank. We'll look forward to seeing you this weekend. We'll just tell you the changes all over the field. Descalzo at third, Garcia at short, Wong at second, Robinson at right, Jay to left. In front of a crowd earlier on, which totaled 43,085. That officially is not a sellout, although every game played at Bush Stadium so far this year has been in excess of 40,000 plus. Tell you, the Cardinals, the, the one thing you wonder as you look at their schedule moving forward, they have played a pile of home games. They'll go to 39 and 26, so 13 games over 500 at home. But they have a lot more road games left to go than they have here at Bush Stadium through the final five, six weeks. As a road team, they're not bad. One game under 500. Jack Canahan will bat, leading off the Reds' ninth. Well, to that end, Tom, they finish the season on the road, the Cardinals do. They have the last six games on the road, but they are three against the Cubs and three in Arizona against the Diamondbacks. Now we're looking. If you're the Cardinals, you're thinking those are good places to vacation in in September. A nice time to be out there in Arizona those last few days of September. Always good rolling into Chi Town. Mm -hmm. Of course, all they'll be talking about in Chicago is Jay Cutler and the Chicago Bears. By the time that series hits. And that could be a good thing. Or that could be a really bad thing. And Hanahan off the bench, hooks one into right field, a base hit. Well, you know one thing, when the Cubs and the Cardinals do get on the field together, well, here's a nice round of applause. Very nice. Skip Schumacher, all the years he played for this Cardinal franchise. He left prior to last year when he went to the Los Angeles Dodgers. You and I were wondering if maybe anything might be wrong with Schumacher. If for the simple fact that 
There's a liner in the left for the first down the inning. Here, three games against the Cardinals this weekend with all right-handers on the mound. And Schumacher did not get a single start in this series. Yeah, the only one I was really surprised about was the Masterson start on the first night just because Masterson's lefty righty splits are so dramatic. He's so difficult to hit if you're a right handed hitter. But it's good that the Cardinal fans remember him. After all, he'd been here parts of seasons ever since 2005. Yep. And that one booted by Colton Wong, and that'll go into right center field. That ball hit very hard by Phillips. Tell you what, last three times up tonight, Brandon has hit the ball right on a screw. He really has. In fact, and including that last night, too. Got a line drive right at the third baseman in the eighth inning last night. Also had a sharp base hit up the middle last night. They're going to give him an error on that, so no hit for Brandon this time. Wow. That ball is stunk. That ball nearly undressed the, the pitcher and then the second baseman. Mm -hmm. Should get something for that. Ramon Santiago has been on base twice tonight. He had an infield hit in the second inning, drew a walk in the fifth, and struck out against Lance Lynn in the seventh. Lynn in line to pick up what would be his 14th win of the season. We talked about Wainwright has 15, so how about that duo? 29 wins. And we still have really almost six full weeks left to go in the year. Soft liner into left field. That'll fall in and gets all the way by Jay. And the Reds are going to get on the board. Two runs will score. Santiago on his way to third with a two-run triple. And it's a 7-2 ball game. Oh, they'll go a base hit and then an error. Now I got to tell you, that has to go down as one of the worst scoring decisions I have ever heard. If you want to give an error to Jay on the ball, I get that. But they did not give Ramon Santiago credit for a single RBI on that base hit. You're kidding. They said both runs scored, including the runner from second base, on the air. So it is a single. An error on Jay, two runs scored, no RBI for Santiago. It's called ERA protection. That's brutal. Two and zero on Christopher Negron, and a ground ball. But it'll be smothered by the shortstop, and then he. Has an errant throw. That'll be an infield hit. Reds have scored three times here in the ninth inning, and they have a man aboard with only one out. RBI that time for Negro. Kevin Mesoraco will be the announced pinch hitters. The Cardinals now are thinking about getting serious here. They've got their closer up and throwing in Trevor Rosenthal. Sam Freeman up down there as well. Freeman has been up for quite some time, so he's ready if they need him. Looked like he was down there just getting his throwing in. Well, you have left-handed, well, you have a switch hitter in, in Billy Hamilton next, and the left-handed batter in Bruce. In there, a strike.
as Araco try to snap an 0 for 20 stretch on this road trip. Matt Holliday can certainly relate. He was 0 for 19 coming into the series and has just taken off in this three game series. Nothing at two on Devin. They're in the bottom of the ninth inning at Wrigley where the Giants are beating up on the Cubs eight to three. And out West Dodgers being shut out early on at home. That ball hooked down the left field line and that is going to fall in a base hit and a ground rule double, which means they're gonna stop Nate Groan at third base. And now all of a sudden, do you bring on your closer, who's had a very tough time himself of late? Because it would be a safe situation now with the tying run in the on-deck circle. And here comes Mike Matheny to get him. They gave a very tough air on uh, Brandon Phillips' ball. So there might be some of this that's unearned, but that was one ugly outing by Carlos Martinez. the bat here in the ninth inning they've scored three times they have runners at second and third and only one out in the top of the order coming up against the struggling Cardinal closer Trevor Rosenthal 57 innings 34 walks he does have 36 saves five blown but lately oh brother not been pretty blown save here on Monday night they had to take him out of the game after three walks against San Diego on Sunday. And while he did pick up his save on Thursday night, it took a miraculous play to end the game. Ball one to Billy Hamilton. And he's really primarily a fastball pitcher. Tries to establish it, those mid to upper 90s. After Hamilton, you've got two pretty good fastball hitters and Bruce and Frazier coming up. Billy had a single his last time up. And there's a strike. That's a borderline strike there. You can tell by the body language of Hamilton as if to say, you got to be kidding. Man, even a snap job there by the catcher. This count should be 3-0 and right now. Confidence wobbly at best right now for Rosenthal. There's a tapper back to the mound, and he's going to get Hamilton. That's a big out. The 
But now Jay Bruce about it. They challenge him with a first pitch fastball, and Bruce foul tipped it. Yeah, one one. You know, we've seen Rosenthal up around almost the triple digits. I don't know if I've seen him throw 100, but he. We've seen him in games where he's sitting at 97 and 98. He's about 95, and it looks mighty straight. to Jay Bruce trying to keep the inning alive get brave Bruce aboard and at least bring the tying run to the plate that would be Todd Frazier next three and one Well, just little things in it at bad. You go back to that Hamilton at bad. There is such an enormous difference between three and zero oh and two and one. Now, I'm not saying the Reds were going to come back and win this game, but I do know one thing: Billy Hamilton wouldn't have been swinging at a three zero -oh pitch. The two one pitch. He hits a little roller back to the mound. Bruce Hacking there, naturally on three and one. And now the Reds down to perhaps their final strike. Out away again. Jay Bruce choking up a little bit. We don't see that very often from Jay. Trying to get that head out. Fastball at 97. Fouled out of play by Bruce. Always like to thank our crew here in St. Louis. These are good folks up here, up here in the booth with us. And we always enjoy our time. And we see them friendly, familiar faces. There's a walk to Bruce. So the tying run will indeed come to the plate. Producer of Reds Baseball, Joshua Hall. Our director is Roy Alpers. Matt Sigafoos, Lauren White, our regular cast of characters on our crew traveling all summer long. We thank them for all of their extraordinary work each and every day. Strike one to Frazier with the bases loaded. And he is a tying run. That was another borderline pitch. Those are the best kind. Frazier, the ninth man to bat. In what has been a three-run ninth inning. Open Rosenthal will give him right where he likes it. A ball and a strike. Good pitch right there on the inside corner. It's not where they were set up, but it's strike two, and now Frazier in a hole at one ball and two strikes. Two and two to Frazier. And a ground ball to short. And that'll do it. And Wesley the bloated. The 
to score three in the ninth inning. All of them charge to Martinez. And Rosenthal picks up his 37th save. Lynn, his 14th win. Plato, the loser, at 15 and 7 on the year. Back with more in a moment. 